last few days have provided new hope for the Mets as they try to forge a playoff run. The big bat of Ioannis Cespedes is back and crushing home runs wherever he goes. At Bush Stadium in St. Louis, the New York Mets play the St. Louis Cardinals. Tuesday Night Baseball is presented by Verizon. New York Mets baseball on SNY is brought to you by the Better Network. Verizon Better Matters. By City, proud partner of the New York Mets. By the all-new 2017 Hyundai Elantra. It's not just new, it's better. By the Jet Blue Card. And by the Lincoln Summer Invitation Sales Event, get exceptional limited time offers on a Lincoln of your choice. Mets begin this series in St. Louis tonight, four and a half games behind the Cardinals, who sit in the second wild card spot in the National League. And a pleasant good evening, everybody, and welcome to St. Louis. Gary Cohen, Ron Darling, Keith Hernandez with you tonight as the Mets open a very important three game series against the Cardinals. The Mets come in four and a half games behind St. Louis. The Cardinals have had issues of their own. They've had a lot of injuries to negotiate past. So, Keith, what's the most intriguing thing to you about this series as we start off tonight? Well, what's intriguing to me, and I'm going to focus on the Mets, and I think the most intriguing thing is Cespedes now, what he did in San Francisco. Is he going to do that again? Another season where he's going to hit the big home run and big home runs. Also, my eyes are on Jose Reyes, who had a nice series in San Francisco. I really think that he's kind of rounding into shape. He gives the Mets a different dimension at the top of the order, a team without speed all year, unable to manufacture runs. Jose has been in the thick of it, stealing bases, scoring runs, and he's starting to swing the bat. Ronnie, so what stands out to you about this series as we get it started? Well, I think the most amazing part is really the sustained excellence of the St. Louis Cardinals organization. How do they do it? I don't know. Every time that we look at them, they're a buttoned up team that plays good defense, pitches well. They have not done any of those things all year long. You know what they've done, though? They have nine guys have hit 10 or more home runs. They've hit the ball out of the ballpark. And it seems like they're getting just enough pitching to get by every night. They're finding a way to win that game this evening. And it seems to be that way every year. The Cardinals have been to the postseason 12 of the last 16 years. Now, the Mets got bad news. Maybe not the worst news, but bad news enough yesterday with Stephen Matz going on the DL. Puts more pressure on the rest, rest of the rotation. Jonathan Neese gets the ball tonight. Well, it's interesting to add to Keith's concerns about the Mets. When you think about it, you thought you were going to have the big five pitching by now. Now you have guys like Jonathan Neese and Seth Lugo in in the rotation. Jonathan has done a lot of good things for this Mets organization. He's going to have to do his best right now. Left-hander Jaime Garcia goes for the Cardinals. Oft injured. He stayed healthy this year, but really up and down. He loves pitching against the Mets here, though. Has never given up an earned run to them in three games started here at Bush Field. He's already gotten to ten wins, winning his last three starts. So the Mets who won their last two in San Francisco, now three and four on this road trip and their most important series to date starting tonight. It's the Mets and the Cardinals. All the action coming your way on SNY.
Mets baseball on SNY is brought to you by Geico over 75 years of savings and service by Bank of America life's better when we're connected and by the State Farm agent of the game Hector Camillo of the Bronx contact Hector at Hector Camillo dot com. Take advantage of a special Coca Cola combo offer and select seating areas during all remaining Mets home games tickets start at just nineteen dollars and include a ten dollar food and beverage credit so you can cheer on the Mets while enjoying your favorite Coca Cola products. Tickets for this offer are only available at Mets.com slash combo. Greater coverage of baseball brought to you by T-Mobile. Huge series beginning tonight. The Dodgers and the Giants in L.A. The Dodgers a game in front of the Giants for the National League West League going into the night. How about Bumgarner and Maeda having the same record? Very interesting. The last three games of the season this year will be in San Francisco. Giants and Dodgers. They play nine more games starting tonight. Now, if only Maeda could hit like Bumgarner. <laughs> there are the standings. The Giants lead the wild card chase, but second in the West by a game to the Dodgers heading into the night. And as we said, nine more games starting tonight between those two teams. Here in St. Louis, the Mets opened a big series with the Cardinals, and earlier tonight, Steve Gelbs caught up with Terry Collins and asked him a few questions about his club. How have you seen uh, Jose Reyes mature as a player from the time you had him last time to where he is right now? Well, he's a he's a dynamic. He's still a, he's still a force. Um, you know, he, is he as fast as he once was? Probably not. I mean, we all lose a half a step as we get older, but he's still exciting to watch. He still creates runs for us. He loves to be back on the field. His energy is contagious. I think it's really helped us at this time of year. So um, he's a mature guy. He knows the game. He pays attention to it. And uh, I think having him at the top of the order has made us better. Terry, clearly a key during a stretch run is to have confidence that you're going to go out there and win every night. When Cespedes comes back and does what he did in the last two games, does that elevate the confidence of the room as a whole? As a whole, no doubt. That you know, hey, look, we fall behind, and, and everybody's saying, well, you know what, we got our, we got some pieces back in our lineup. We can catch up in a hurry. So I think that confidence that, that with with Cess back in the lineup, with Cabby back in the lineup, with Jose in the lineup, obviously we'll get Neil back uh, in a couple of days. You know, that's going to make a big difference as we go down the stretch. Jonathan Nice making his way in, getting set to make his second start since returning to the Mets. A big one tonight for the Mets here in St. Louis, where Nice has pitched well in the past. Mets and Cardinals. First pitch is coming right up.
Ed last month at City Field. They played a doubleheader after a rainout and split the first two games in well pitched ball games. Then in the third one, it was back and forth. Joanna Cespedes had a huge home run for the Mets. They took a one run lead into the ninth, but Jerry's familiar had a rough ninth inning, and the Cardinals were able to capture the final game of that series as they beat the Mets five to four and took the series two games to one. And now they meet again tonight here in St. Louis, where the Cardinals have enjoyed more success than any National League franchise. 11 World Series titles most recently in 2011. We mentioned 12 of the last 16 years they've been in the postseason. And Mike Matheny is the only manager in Major League history to make the postseason each of his first four seasons as a big league manager. Earlier this year, Matheny sat down with Steve Gelbs and talked about the Cardinal way and why they've had such consistent success. Uh, and, and excellence and I think that and I know that that comes down from the top with our ownership group right down through our front office and, we, and just trying to have that continuity of the expectation we pass it on to every kid that has the uh, the honor of wearing this this logo that it, it's not just a baseball team it's an organization that stands for something and and the way that we go about our business does make a difference and uh, yes uh, it is about uh, ability it is about competing but we also feel there's a way you should go about the game on the field also off the field that gives us a greater chance of success that, that represents our organization and our fan base in a way that keeps people coming back and you know, our jobs to put butts in the seats and our jobs to put a good product out there and, and continue a tradition and hopefully keep passing on that culture and that excellence. And the Cardinals doing it a little differently this year they haven't played particularly good defense haven't pitched particularly well but they've been a big home run hitting team this year and they're hoping that that can carry them to another postseason berth they would be in if the season ended today. Here's your Mets Geico starting lineup. Neil Walker away after the birth of his daughter earlier today. Congratulations to Neil and Nikki Walker on the birth of their daughter Nora early this morning. So T.J. Rivera is back from the minor leagues while Neil's on paternity leave. He was hitting extremely well before the Mets sent him down on Friday. He goes in at second base and the Mets have Wilma Flores at first base against the left hander Jaime Garcia. Well Jaime Garcia's numbers you can see them with the 10 wins but even more importantly Garcia has done it by getting a lot of runs they're scoring four and a half runs a game for him this Cardinals offense but also something to watch in tonight's game on base percentage leadoff hitter of any inning against Garcia this year 417. And the defense for the St. Louis Cardinals. Coors light defense. Tony Pham in left field. Matt Holliday on the DL. But Stephen Biscotti in right has become a star player that they expected him to become. Having a great year. Johnny Peralta at third base off the DL. Hasn't been hitting. He's at third base. Matt Carpenter moves back to his original position at second base. Matt Jorko at shortstop is a bit of a surprise. And of course, the gold glover, Yadier Molina behind the plate. Cardinals have been uh, moving that infield around with the injury to Alemis Diaz. Jerko starting at shortstop for the sixth time this year. Well, there's Garcia. Jose Reyes will lead things off. Reyes, after a real hot streak, went hitless on Sunday night, 0 for his last seven. Corners in against Jose, and the first pitch of the game from Garcia in for a strike, and we're underway. Tommy Garcia injury played throughout his career Tommy John surgery early in his career labrum surgery thoracic mm. outlet surgery. But this year healthy all year 25 starts for the first time since 2011. Well in 2010 and 2011 he won 13 games both of those seasons when he was at the top of his game before those injuries. He's not a strikeout pitcher. He's a contact pitch to contact pitcher. Doesn't walk a lot of people. There's Mike Matheny, the manager. It's David Bell to his yes. right, our left. Bench coach. And Garcia falls behind the leadoff hitter, three and one. Jose hitting 306 against left handers uh, in his 25 games since coming back. This is his 26th game in a Met uniform. And he draws a walk to open the night. And so Reyes is aboard to start the first game of this series. And as Dribble Cabrera will come to bat. 
Cabrera three for 11 is three games since coming off the disabled list hitting a 255 for the year and like Reyes has hit for a higher average right handed than he has left handed. Well the Mets have got their people back offensively and with Matt's going down now and really put a cr puts a crimp in the rotation the offense is going to have to pick it up. Well this is a team that was built to win with exceptional starting pitching every day and now you're down to Syndergaard DeGrom and Cologne from the original Mets rotation. Spawn insane. <laughs> I would think a lot of rain, Ronnie. <laughs> With 38 to go. Oh. <laughs> well, there is rain nearby here. It's supposed to get a little spritz here at around 9 o'clock, which would be 10 o'clock your time, folks. Unless they're watching on the West Coast. <laughs> <laughs> we had some rain earlier in the day here in St. Louis. Reyes, five steals and seven tries. And Cabrera lines a base hit, and the Mets have the first two men on. Well Gary you mentioned in the open this is uh, 38 games to go. This is the time for this team if they're going to make a run to get it started now. Big series here. They're four and a half behind five in the loss column to the Cardinals. Nice swinging right there by Cabrera. They need to win a series here and when you win a series it's always the first game is the most important game. You got to take that first game in a series and one very important early at bat in this game for you and Cespedes hit two home runs on Saturday. He had a two run homer for the only runs of the Mets win over the Giants on Sunday night. And the Mets are hoping that he's got a run in him like he did last year. He takes a strike from Garcia. Well, Flores is hitting in the cleanup spot, which uh, Wilmer has been hitting cleanup with left hand uh, pitchers out there. Wilmer with eight home runs, but I tell you what, I'm not pitching to Cespedes in any crunch time situation. Although you have to pitch to him here. Yes, you do. That's why it becomes such an important at bat early in this game. That's getting the first two on in front of him. And he pops Ooh. it a mile high. Infield flyer will be invoked as Carpenter backpedals under it for the first out of the game. Well, another vicious cut from Cespedes. He never gets cheated, and he's right on this pitch. He just got under it. He's got the canary yellow on. He just missed that one. Look at his expression. He knows uh, I missed it. You see Jaime Garcia. He covered his face with his <laughs> glove like an embarrassment over that pitch down the middle. No, it was like thank you. <laughs> I <laughs> promise never to do that again. <laughs> so that's the first out of the night. Now Wilmer Flores is hitting 341 against lefties with eight of his 12 home runs. Reyes takes off for third. The throw by Molina on a hop, and Reyes gets in safely. A double steal. A good throw by Molina. He might have had him. Yes. But Yanni bounced the throw, and Reyes and Cabrera pull off the double steal. And I think now Jose is kind of rounding into shape. And remember, now he's going to be strong. He hasn't played a full season here, so he can turn it on these last 40, 50 ball games. There's 38 left. And again, he steals another base gear, making things happen. His sixth, Cabrera's second, only the Mets' 30th and 31st steals of the year coming in their 125th game. Infield back for Flores, and he takes the change up low and away, 2 0. And again, their goal, Glover, with a good throw, Reyes is out at third. They've got a people out of position everywhere. Brandon Moss at first base is an outfielder. Jerko is more of a second baseman, he's at short. Peralta's a shortstop at third base. And Flores lifts one to left. That'll get a run in. Back goes Pham out of the warning track near the wall. It's out of here. Wilmer Flores with a three run homer to put the Mets in front. Wilmer goes deep again against a lefty. His 13th home run of the year is ninth against left hand pitching. And the Mets get off to a fast start against Jaime Garcia and the Cardinals. It's three nothing New York. Number nine against left hand pitching. High fastball. Belt high, not in enough. Actually, it wasn't that bad, Ron. It was just he turned on it. But you always talk, Keith, that Wilmer loves that ball middle of the plate in. He does. 
And that ball just kept on carrying and carrying until it left the ballpark and gave the Mets the early lead. I almost thought that he got under it too much, Gare. I thought when he first hit it, it might go to the warning track, but it landed five rows deep in the stands. So here's Jay Bruce with the Mets ahead in this game, 3 0. Bruce trying to fight his way out of what has been a persistent slump since he joined this team. 19 games, he's hitting just 169. So Garcia can give up an earned run against the Mets here at Bush Stadium. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you what, if Bruce finds his stroke, that's another bat in the lineup and a left handed bat. And Bruce pops one foul. Neither of these pitchers, Nice or Garcia, control left handers the way you, most left handed starters do. Well, in fact, lefties have hit better than righties against Garcia four straight years. He strikes out Bruce for the second out of the inning. And Jay's troubles continue. Keith, what'd you do to Jay Bruce today? You rubbed up against him to try to get what? Give him some good luck? Well, you know, I can give my hits away now. I'm not playing. So I kind of rubbed up against him and give him come up a couple of my hits. Didn't know you had any left. I didn't, I didn't know you still could do that. <laughs> I saved them. They put them in the freezer. <laughs> you have cryogenic hits? <laughs> Here's TJ Rivera just back from Vegas. Taking Neil Walker's spot while Neil's away on the paternity list, and TJ takes a strike. I'm not taking your head to Arizona anytime soon. I'll tell <laughs> Please you that. don't. Don't leave me in suspension. <laughs> don't leave me hanging, Ronnie. Okay. Well, it's working for some other left hand hitter with a good track record. Rivera 31 big league at bats hitting 355. He has been as advertised so far. Contact hitter who hits line drives all over the ballpark. That's a good change up by Garcia and it's one and two. It's the first change up Garcia has thrown to a right hander and he's was up in the strike zone early and he got burned It's three runs are out of the barn already. And Rivera hits the comebacker. Garcia gets the out. Inning over, but not before the Mets grab the early lead. Wilmer Flores, a three run bomb, hands John Neese an early lead. Monday starting lineup for the Cardinals with Matt Holiday out Tommy Pham's playing left field with Matt Adams out Brandon Moss is playing first base with the led Miss Diaz out Jed Jerko is playing shortstop Cardinals missing three key pieces from their lineup mm -hmm. right now. And John Neese gets a three nothing lead to work with his fam leads off and takes a cutter for a strike. Okay folks 
Don't kill the messenger. Jonathan Neese, when he staked to a three run lead, got this from Mitch, our stack guy. 55 and three. No. See, yes. Saying he prospers with prosperity. Yes. He pitches well with a big lead. <laughs> that too. And there's his uh, <laughs> Land Rover numbers for his time in Pittsburgh and in a Mets uniform. Fam hitting a 256 in part time play and he takes the pitch high. He's got off to a good start in his first start since returning to the Mets. First three innings against the Diamondbacks. He didn't allow a hit, struck out five, but the roof caved in on him in the fourth inning. Hmm. Nice. He gave up back to back home runs to Ricky Weeks and Yasmani Tomas and did not finish the fifth inning. His knee flared up a little bit. That knee is still a concern going into the start tonight. Mets called up Robert Gazelman from Triple A. Gazelman had been starting for Vegas, but he is the long man tonight if Nice has trouble early. I'll tell you, if there's an injury, the Mets team can find it. Crazy year this year. Well, the Cardinals, too. They, yeah, they've, been, right. they've been banged up. 3 2 to Fam. And he walked him. He's got ahead of the leadoff hitter 0 and 2 when he walks Tommy Pham. So each of these left handers has walked his first batter tonight. And the Mets defense brought to you by Lexus. Ruggiano in center field off the DL. He will always be in center field against left handers. Wilmer will always be at first base. Jose Cabrera, they're back off the DL. TJ Rivera, he tell you what, he's done a heck of a job. He's going to play against left handers at second base. Darno behind the plate. You know, Keith always is a long time. It, well, I was just being. I was, call it here. Scotty hits one into left, and Cespedes makes a shoestring catch for the first out. Easy. Makes it look easy, doesn't he? Makes everything look easy. I mean, you can't two hand this ball. It's all about getting there. Sinking line drive. Cespedes can play every. Aspect of the game. He is a complete player. Cardinals really trying to start the game the same way the Mets did. So one out and one on. Now Matt Carpenter. You see uh, Cespedes stretching out that quad. Mm. That's always the beginning, right? Good point, Gary. Very observant That's of you. the first time I've seen him do that since he came back as Carpenter takes a curveball for a strike. Think about it. Uh, just out in the outfield he's twirling his leg around now pounding oh, it me up it's bothering it's him. the first quick movement he's had to make right off the bat it's not oh, good it's not good to do that don't stop doing that it's not good for it that's the last thing that the Mets want to see right now oh. is Cespedes dealing with that quad again they put him on the disabled list he's come back strong he's looked 100 percent but all of a sudden it's giving him some problem again. Those pulls, they're aggravating, they're lingering, they are. Geez, just want to put them up against a wall and blow them away. You know, that's the thing you can't replicate. You know, these trainers try to get them out and they're playing in games and trying to run some sprints and this or that. You cannot put them in a situation where he just had an at bat, first ball to him was a bullet, and he's got to move like a bullet to get it. You can't exactly. replicate that. It's that exactly. first explosion. Yeah. Right? Well, he's trying to work his way through it. Two and one to Carpenter, who was hurt when the Mets saw the Cardinals last month, and Nice bounces the changeup, and it's three and one. Carpenter was having a great year before he went down with an oblique injury, still mm. fourth in the National League on base percentage. And another oblique. He was in the MVP talk early with Murphy and others. Now, the Cardinals have recently put him in the three hole. But he has not been productive as a three hitter. He's one of the best leadoff hitters in the game. And that's outside ball four. And Nice has now walked a pair in the opening inning. So this game is not getting off to a good start for Nice in the bottom of the first. They're the on base percentage leaders in the National League. Yeah, Joey Votto always up there at the top. Anthony Rizzo joins the club. What a player he is. How about LeMahieu making a batting title run at Murph? Tied now, right? 345. I think Murph went ahead. Oh, he did. Murph had two for three yesterday. I think LeMahieu went one for four. Here's Brandon Moss sitting cleanup and playing first base. 23 home runs this year for Moss. 
one of nine Cardinals with 10 or more home runs that ties a franchise record for St. Louis. And Moss takes a big cut and fouls it off. And the man at second base, Tommy Pham, has nine, so he might join that parade. This was the hitter that I thought coming into the game that Jonathan was going to have to control. He doesn't control left handed hitters, and Moss has crazy power. Although oh. only two of his 23 home runs have come against lefties this year. Correct, Gary. You make a good point right there. 238 batting average. He is really a guy that's a platoon player, and he's. 272 with 21 home runs against right handers this year. Moss now 32 years old, a guy whose career looked like it was washed up until he signed with Oakland as a minor league free agent and then hit 55 home runs in two years for the A's. It's bounced around a little since, but Cardinals picked him up at the deadline last year. East goes to the slow curve and gets ahead one and two. Sometimes people forget that game that Kansas City came back, that wall card game two years ago. It's Brandon Moss who had two home runs in that game to put Oakland ahead. Yadier Molina waiting on deck. Fam at second, Carpenter at first, and Moss fouls it off. Stayed in there. Nice number he's wearing there, number 37, I noticed. They didn't retire that. That's got hits in it. That trust me. When it's got the red, it's got hits. They retired it in 1983. Yeah, they retired <laughs> it, right? <laughs> I believe he's a free agent next year. Is he not, boss? He's having a heck of a year. One, two coming, and down to get it is Darno. Two and two. He's made four relief outings for the Mets before getting his first start last Wednesday in Arizona. He had been bumped from the rotation in Pittsburgh before the Mets reacquired him. And now trying to prove he can still be an effective big league starter. This inning has not gotten off to a good beginning. And now he's run a full count on Moss. I don't believe you can run your hitters here. You're down three runs. You got a guy that strikes out an all or nothing kind of hitter. I think you're going to leave them anchored on base. Jonathan cannot afford to walk three guys and load these load the bases. Advantage Brandon Moss. Three two coming and he fouls one off his foot. His ball four right there. It's a little change up maybe. No 87 that's his fastball just sinking. Early this season in these situations, Nice was getting a lot of double play balls. His sinker was really effective. 11 double play grounders in his first nine starts this year, only two in his last 19 appearances. He's got to have that sinker working. Eighth pitch of the at bat coming to Moss. Hits it hard through the hole of base hit. Bam to third. He's being waved home. Bruce's throw to the plate is. Not in time. And the Cardinals are on the board. It's three to one. So Brandon Moss drives in his 57th run of the year. Sinker, too much plate. And Carpenter, the back runner, never hesitates. And now, uh oh. Fam here runs too well, scores easily. And the trainer, Ray Ramirez, is out at the mound along with Terry Collins, and clearly there's concern about Nice, and he's coming out of the game. I don't know if it's the knee or something else, but Nice exits after four batters, and Robert Gazelman, just up from the minor leagues, is going to make his major league debut in long relief here in the first inning. It has been an eventful first inning already. Flores with a three run homer. Nice exited after four batters. Cespedes might have tweaked something in his leg in the outfield making a catch and we're only in the first inning of this game. And Nice limping down the dugout steps. Well I can see as he tries to back up a noticeable limp. And if there's a genre for this Mets season so far, it's in horror. 
So Robert Gazelman, another young Met pitcher with flowing locks, will get his oh. major league debut in an enormous situation with the Mets leading three to one in the bottom of the first. He'll enter the game with two on and one out, and he he's smiling. He's he's not feeling nerves at all, is he, Ron? Yeah, you're smiling because of the nerves. <laughs> Call to the bullpen bought you by Verizon. Robert Gazelman's big league debut when we come back. MLB.com at Bat App, which includes game day, live game video highlights, stack cast news, and more. Download MLB.com at Bat, the number one app for live baseball on your phone and tablet. Well, what an eventful first inning this has been in the Mets' first of three important games here in St. Louis. You went to Cespedes tweaking his quad, making a catch here in the bottom of the first inning, and he's sitting in the bullpen while Robert Gazelman warms up. For his long relief outing. Wilmer Flores a three run homer off Jaime Garcia to get the Mets off to a fast start but then John Neese walks two of the first three hitters gives up a run scoring hit and then winds up leaving the game apparently retweaking his left knee and so Neese is out after just a third of an inning and the Mets will have to try and fill in from here. Well I think what's really difficult about Robert Kinselman is that he's never pitched in relief. So his first time in pitching in relief he's got to go out there and warm up and get ready something he's never done because he's been a starting pitcher. Uh, how difficult could that be now Gazelman when you watch him folks he likes to keep the ball down he's got a good sinker they need a double play maybe he can get one here but from a long term perspective maybe more troubling is Cespedes apparently tweaking that quad. How careful does he need to be now as he continues to try to play with that. Well we're going to keep an eye on him Gary. It was interesting that he was down in the bullpen and no one was really kind of he wasn't rubbing it. It probably grabbed a little bit on him so we'll play it by ear here but that's a major concern for the Mets. So Gazelman who's pitched in double A and triple A this year 20 starts no relief outings comes on a relief and Molina greets him with a long drive to right center over the head of Ruggiano and up against the wall Carpenter is in to score Moss will be held at third Yadier Molina with a run scoring double and just like that the Mets lead is three to two. Well that's greeted rudely Keith. Molina's been red hot, Ronnie, and he doesn't wait. He's waste any time. Never faced this guy. First pitch, fastball up and away. Molina loves to go to the opposite field, and the Cardinals are in business. So two runs are in. Second and third, still only one out. 
And now Johnny Peralta who's been on the disabled list twice this year thumb surgery and then he had more thumb issues that sent him back so he's only had 172 at bats this year. That's at the infield back. And Peralta takes up and away from Gazelman. So two organizations that came into this year thinking that pitching was going to be their strength. Uh, a track meet has started here in St. Louis. Robert Gazelman, 23 years old, grew up in Los Angeles, Westchester High School. Pretty good basketball player in high school as well. And his sinker misses low and in is 2 0 to Peralta. Gazelman struggled early in his tenure with Vegas, but had been pitching much better lately, leading to his call up. And uh, this would have been his day to throw. So he is uh, he's on the right day if in a little unusual place for him. Mm. And now he falls behind Peralta 3 0. That slider is a relatively new pitch for him. It is. He only uses it really against right handed hitters. He's got that low sinking action on his fastball. His changeup is probably his worst pitch at 23 years old. Jed Jerko on deck, first base open. And Peralta takes a fastball for a strike, three and one. Peralta now 34 years old in his third year with the Cardinals. Remember, he signed a four year, $53 million contract after having been suspended for PEDs. And that raised a lot of eyebrows in the industry, but he's played very well for St. Louis since they picked him up. Well, it really is the Peralta rule now. If you are chased for PEDs during the season, you're not able to play in the postseason. He was in Detroit, played in the outfield, and got himself that job. Remember, the Mets were interested in Peralta. Once he signed for $53 million, they weren't as interested in Peralta. Because <laughs> Elman's worked his way from 3 0 to 3 2. He could use a strikeout. And Peralta grounds one down to Reyes. That's going to tie the game. Reyes gets the out at first as Moss comes in to score, and it's three to three. Well, back to square one. Well, Gazelman able to get an out, and that's maybe going to allow him to take a deep breath. Mets conceding the run appropriately. We're back to the starting line. So Wilmer Flores a three run homer in the top of the inning negated here in the bottom. And now Jed Jerko who's been red hot 13 home runs since the all star break. That ties him for the most in the National League. Since the break. And takes the first pitch curveball for a strike. Jerko getting more playing time with. All the injuries on the Cardinals infield playing shortstop tonight. He played a little shortstop of the Padres last year, but it's not his best position. Had a good series against the Mets in New York, a couple of home runs. Molina dancing off second. Because Elman gets ahead on Jerko 0 and 2. Nothing. Oh and two to Jerko. And he bounces that breaking ball one and two. You know it's interesting to watch Wilmer Flores at first base. Loney, who has tons more experience, usually shifts a little closer to the hole to try to eat up that hole. Wilmer does not. He gets off first base, but not as far as Loney. Zellman ahead one and two on Jerko. And he misses high. Two and two. You know, Darno's getting to learn catching Gazelman also. Hard to ask a guy who's a sinker baller who loves to pitch down the strike zone to pitch up. Up to him sometimes is in the happy area. Molina again dancing off second and the 2 2 is swung and missed and Gazelman has his first big league strikeout as he fans Jerko to end the inning but the Cardinals get three Nice leaves because of injury we'll keep our eye on Cespedes it's 3 3 after one.
So now it's time for the second inning at Bush Stadium. <laughs> what can we do for an encore? Three to three as we start the second. Justin Ruggiano will lead off against Tommy Garcia. Ruggiano has been a a huge boost for the Mets since coming back from the disabled list, and he yanks one foul. Had the grand slam against Madison Bumgarner last week, and then Saturday went two for three and a walk, drove in a run. And Jaime Garcia split kings, and he's still living <laughs> to speak about it. Jeez. Oh, oh, cambio. Going to Ruggiano, Travis Darno on deck, and then Robert Gazelman for the Mets in the second. After Garcia gave up a walk, a single, a double steal, and a three run homer in the first. And Ruggiano takes strike three call. Change up got him looking. Second strikeout for Garcia. You know what Gazelman's doing right now, Gary? Trying to find where his helmet is. Do I have a bat? Can I borrow someone's bat? <laughs> you don't think he came with bats from uh, Vegas? It, it's bad karma to uh, bring a bat is before it? you. Yeah, it's, you don't want to ever want to do that. I mean, it's not not that you wouldn't bring in a bat, but you wouldn't leave it in the mix because you think you're going to get in that bat. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's not the right thing to do. Get it later. Shoot. How wow. many pitchers have the Mets already had this year wearing numbers in the 60s? Yeah. Right? It's got to be a got to be a record. It's like spring training. To a note to Darno, Travis 10 hits in his last 22 at bats. If I had to wear a 60, you'd want to go maybe with 64. Old wow. number 16 wore that in spring training. That was his first number. Oh. Hit hard, base hit for Darno. So the Mets have their third hit, and Darno continues to raise his batting average. He has been swinging a very red hot bat. You're not going to have a lot of range, although that ball hit right in the nose on that left side of that Cardinal inf infield with Jerko and Peralta at third base. So now Gazelman will get a chance to lay down a bunt. In his minor league career, three hits in 25 career at bats, two sacrifices. Probably have to ask someone what's the signs. All of those things. And he gets the bunt down, a very nice one. And Molina makes the play. First pitch, Gazelman gets it done. 2 4 on the sacrifice. He'll be giving lessons now. Look at he's trying to the pine tar is getting all over his hands. Someone gave him some batting gloves. Make sure he doesn't oh. you put batting gloves on to bunt. By the way, though, don't mess with the guy's equipment. That doesn't work very well right now. <laughs> Outstanding bunt. Well done. So Darno is in scoring position with two out. Here's Reyes who walked, stole the base, scored a run in the first. Jose takes a strike. Well, Garcia Keith has really gone to plan B. Change up master now. That's about his fourth this inning. First inning he was high with his fastball, and he's found the range now with his secondary pitches. Beat Garcia in New York back in July, second game of that doubleheader. Only game the Mets won in that series. Gave up three runs in five innings in that start. And Reyes pulls one on the ground under oh. the glove of Jerko. Darno being waved home. Here comes the throw by Pham to the plate. It's up the line, down to second. Reyes, he gets in safely. The Mets are back in front. It's four to three. Now the deficiencies on the left side of that Cardinal infield certainly showing themselves as Reyes snuck that ball through to get Darnell home with the fourth med run. Well, Jerko, not a shortstop, doesn't quite bend over, gets under his glove, and then Peralta throws salt on the wound here. No chance at home to get Darno and doesn't cut the ball off. 
Reyes was committed to second base was an easy out to end the inning. Keith man on second two outs you have to dive for that baseball 100 percent of the time. Agreed. So Reyes gets an RBI hit takes second on the throw he continues to produce at the top of the batting order. And now it's Dribble Cabrera who singled stole a base and scored a run in the first. So the Mets after being equalized in the bottom of the first take the lead right back. And there's no excuse for Jerko there. He's a middle infielder by nature. He knows that is a rule that's been in place for 150 years. Yeah, even if you can't throw the guy you out, you to. smother it and keep the runner at third. Who's teaching this game? Come on. Now Garcia behind Cabrera 2 0. And as Dribble hits one out to right center field, headed back toward the gap, Piscotti on the run won't get there. And it's up to the wall. Reyes is in. Cabrera pulls in at second with an RBI double, and it's 5 to 3, New York. Back to back, two out RBI hits for Reyes and Cabrera at the top of the batting order. Welcome back from the DL, all you Met regulars. And the offense off quick here. I was listening to you guys Keith in San Francisco and you say Cabrera hasn't missed a thing since coming back. He's particularly swinging well from the right side of the plate. He pulled one tonight for a base hit and now a double the right center field gap. Five for 13 since coming back off the DL. Now Cespedes who popped up his first time up. Cabrera at second with two down two runs home in the inning. And Garcia sells one high. Can't walk. Cespedes here because the next batter hit a three on home run off you in the first inning. I mean you can. He's going to try to get him out with change ups which is to his detriment. That's what. Samarja tried to do on Sunday night. Ball on a strike to Cespedes. Carpenter playing right behind the bag at second in a near shift against Cespedes. And he chases the breaking ball in the dirt, one and two. Cespedes always has, oh, there we go with the leaderboard there, Gary, the slug for slugging percentage. Number two behind Daniel Murphy in the National League in slugging percentage on the Porsche leaderboard. Boy, has Chris Bryant been red hot? 100 RBIs now, Ron? He has two games this year where he has five hits in the game and two home runs in that game. Look at Murph at 6'10. Having a phenomenal year. But seeing Bryant and Rizzo together on that leaderboard, we've been talking about that all year, right? Yeah. Who's the MVP of that team, Bryant or Rizzo? The hard call. Well, the, the, the hardest call. Is that right now? I think it's going to fall to Murphy because Brian and Rizzo are going to like you know play each other off. There's going to be some votes for each. It'll be like 1988 all over again. There you go. Two and two to Cespedes, and he just got a piece. Well, the Cubs with a huge lead, 12 and a half games in front of the Cardinals, that enabled the Cubs to. Proactively put John Lackey on the disabled list, give him a little rest as they head toward the stretch. Cubs 34 games over 500. Hello. So the Cardinals with virtually no chance at their division, but sitting in a postseason spot right now. Two and two to Cespedes. And he sees a fastball and mm, on. did he? he Strike he, three. he caught it but juggled it. It was very strange. Yeah, normally they're not going to give you that, but the home plate umpire Mike Winters said that Molina sufficiently it, it his, caught it. It hit his body after he, he did not catch that ball. If you use your equipment to push it back into your glove, that is not a legal foul tip. But he got the call. Third strikeout for Garcia. Mets get a couple and go back in front, 5-3.
get to City Field this Friday for Free Shirt Friday when the Mets play the Phillies at 7:10. All fans in attendance will receive a Uane Cespedes T-shirt courtesy of United Healthcare. For tickets, visit Mets.com/Free Shirt Fridays. We go to the bottom of the second inning, and if you just joined us, boy, you've missed a lot. <laughs> exactly. Robert Kazelman in his second big league inning gets ahead on Randall Grichik 0-2. Zellman gave up a first pitch double to Yadier Molina to drive in a run, retired the next two hitters, and the Mets subsequently scored two in the top of the inning to regain the lead. Richick hits a little toe tall for Gesellman, and in comes Cabrera to make the play one away. Let's go back to that strikeout assessment. As the rule is on a foul tip, you have to catch the ball with your glove only. It hits his oh. leg and his knee pad and bounces back and he catches it. That is absolutely not a foul tip third strike. By the way, I saw that up here. How can they not see that down there? And that was like a pinball wizard there. That, that went from his right arm to his left knee. Well, he's an eight-time gold glover. I guess he gets the benefit of the doubt. Not for me, he doesn't. Didn't he get the platinum one year? Yes, he did. Best overall fielder. Jaime Garcia, seven hits this year, four runs batted in. Lifetime 150 hitter. So now with Gazelman joining the Mets staff with. Syndergaard and DeGrom. Yeah. I mean, do they need to hire a, a, a hair care specialist? Uh, absolutely. I mean, come on. It's very important with that hair that long that you mix in some good conditioner. You can't go cheap on the conditioner. How do you know that? You never had hair that long, did you? No. no. Never. He had big hair, though. My hair would be Back like. In the uh, 80s. Longer I grow it, the more I look like a chia pet. What? A chia pet. It just grows straight out. It doesn't grow long. Right. Much to happen to me. Yeah. It's just it's unmanageable. We're just jealous. I loved having long hair. <laughs> I know you did. It's been a long time. Though. You got the picture in your wallet still when you have the long hair? I do. <laughs> Once you break it out. <laughs> Three two to Garcia is fouled off. I think that Gary, the fans would love to see it. I know you'd love for them to see it. Of course. Tommy Pham is on deck. It's back on your radical days. <laughs> oh. And Gazelman <laughs> walks the opposing pitcher. So after Nice walked two in the opening inning, now Gazelman walks the pitcher in the second inning. <laughs> so one out and one on. Now Tommy Pham who walked and scored in the first. Fam hitting leadoff tonight, tenth time this year he's batted leadoff. And a check swing on the slider, and he went around, nothing and one. Well, this is the reaction to the Garcia walk. Oh, because he eyeballed him. That's that's why they're doing that sign. Remember that. Double play ball Rivera to Cabrera and on to first four six three double play gets Gazelman through the inning. That negates the walk. Yes. After two five three New York.
distinctive piece of architecture. That is the Gateway Arch, yep. designed by A.M. Pei, mm -hmm. sitting on the banks of the Mississippi River, looking at it there from the Illinois side. And it is the tallest monument in the United States, 630 feet wide, 630 feet tall. It is an engineering marvel, folks, and is emblematic or symbolic of the gateway to the West. Lewis and Clark, of course, started out of St. Louis, down the Missouri River, out west. I'm with paid, the great, great discovery. I'm Pace had a nice uh, career, you know, yeah. the Pyramid, the Louvre. <laughs> he's done okay. You know, he's done okay. He's done a few things. <laughs> Wilmer Flores leads off in the third inning. Mets with a 5-3 lead. Flores cracked a three-run homer in the first inning. His 13th of the year. Jaime Garcia still out there chucking despite a very difficult beginning to his game. Garcia's given up 10 runs in his last seven innings of work. And keeping the ball away from Wilmer 2 and 0. Keith mentioned uh, before very important series for the Mets to take and something that we did not mention Cardinals are not good here at Bush Stadium this year. Five games under 500 at home. 2 and 1 to Flores. They've been a much better team on the road. Did you say they had the best road record in baseball Keith? They do. In that road record let me get let me just but my card here that is 38 and 24 on the road but only five games they're five games under 500 yeah. at home and that's the interesting part how much more they scored away from home they beat the Mets two out of three at City Field they didn't score a lot in that series it was a well pitched series that's would have certainly been able to Take that series, but Jerry's familiar. Blew the save in the final game. Three and two to Flores, and Wilmer goes down on the changeup. Fourth strikeout for Garcia. Well, the city probables for the remainder of the series. Jacob Degrom tries to shake off his worst outing of the year, his last time out against the Giants, against the best pitcher the Cardinals have had this year, Carlos Martinez. Seth Lugo gets his second start. He was terrific first time. And he'll go up against Adam Wainwright on Thursday night. DeGrom gave up eight runs and 13 hits mm. in San Francisco. Career highs both. Well, the bad part about it is he was staked for to a four nothing lead, right? It's one you got to have, but you well, know, no one feels worse than Jake. And that, he gave it back the next half inning. Yeah. It's the hardest I've ever seen him hit. Ronnie in yeah. San Francisco and it happens. I mean everybody gets their gets their clock cleaned every now and again and he got his clock cleaned. They hit him hard and the home run Bumgarner hit was probably the second hardest hit ball for Bumgarner in the game. First time up you get a bullet to center field it was hit even harder. That's right. I saw that. Two and one to Bruce. You guys really did set up Bumgarner's uh, home run very well. Let everyone know how good of a hitter he is. He could have played in the 40s 50s 60s Bumgarner. Tough as nails. Bruce goes after the sinker and misses two and two. They're playing Bruce a big shift on the right side of the infield. Three infielders on that side, but not playing deep out in the outfield, just on the fringe of the outfield grass. Bruce struck out his first time up. Late switch. Ooh, look out. Dangerous area over the dugout of the Mets. You saw Freddie Galvis's comments in Philadelphia hit someone uh, with a foul ball, and he was really shaken up about it and had some strong comments about it. Good going, Freddie. And Garcia with the slider strikes out Bruce, so he's got three strikeouts in a row. Second time he's fanned Bruce tonight. Out in front, reaching for the curve right now. He's still out in front. He's swinging better on the fastballs, but he's still a little out in front of the left hander with that breaking ball. Got to bring it back, wait. And you can see the frustration in his face. 12 hits in 73 at bats since joining the Mets. Here's TJ Rivera. He goes after a first pitch changeup, nothing in one. Well, Garcia is a day late and a nickel short with the secondary pitches. He's given up five runs here. <laughs> Don't know how this game's going to turn out. 
That's lined right at the shortstop. Jerko's got it to end the inning. So Garcia has a 1 2 3 inning. Still 5 3 New York in the third. Let's look at tonight's Verizon trivia question. Who are the three Met players who hit home runs in the 2000 National League Championship Series against the Cardinals, which the Mets won in five games? I've got two of them. Oh, I think I have all three. Really? Yeah. <laughs> and that was the black period. Didn't for know me. I was going to say, yeah. I didn't know you were watching that. Well, I, I was working. Can you believe it? Here's Stephen Piscotty leading off in the home third. Piscotty lined out to left. That was the shoestring catch by Cespedes, after which Ioannis was flexing his right quad. Gazelman throws a fastball away and gets ahead 0 2. Gazelman's worked an inning and two thirds in relief in his big league debut. He's allowed a hit and a walk, struck out one after John Neese left with left knee pain in the first. The Mets are saying that. Nice did not feel the left knee pain in the bullpen warming up, but did feel it during the first inning. Of course, we saw him limping when he went to back up home plate after giving up the base hit to Brandon Moss, and it was at that point that he came out of the game. And that brought in Giselman, who just got here. Curveball yeah. fouled off. Giselman took Stephen Matz's spot on the roster with Matz placed on the disabled list. Yesterday, with what they're calling left shoulder tightness, which is to say that the MRI didn't really show anything. Huh. So the Mets' hope is that that tightness will resolve itself in time for Mats to just miss the start here Thursday and be ready to jump back into the rotation next Tuesday when he'd be scheduled to pitch again. But now, one of the reasons Gazelman's here is to help the bullpen. So if Gazelman goes into the rotation, Nice has got to go in the DL, someone else is coming in from Vegas. Right. Right? Well both Josh Edgen and Eric Adell were sent down to Vegas yeah. in the last few days. That's right. Three and two to Piscotti. And he fouls it away. Well, the beauty of this outing for Gazelman coming into the first inning with the Mets leading is he can treat this like a start. Yes, he can. And go as deep as a starter might. As long as he holds the lead. Mm. Fly ball hit the shallow center. And in comes Reggiano. One away. Interesting here in the outfield for the Bush Stadium. They have the arch kind of mowed into the grass, which is really cool. Yep. And then they have two new pieces of turf 
about what 20 by 20 in left field and right field where the outfielders will predominantly play most of their time. Didn't McCarver call that back at Old Shea in the <laughs> strawberry patch? Yes, yes, he, yes did. he did. But it was yellow from straw playing out there. Well, we saw that. Where were we just? In Phoenix, right? Where the, the places where the, the yep. outfielders play were completely threadbare. Matt Carpenter walked and scored in the first inning. Big shift on Carpenter again here. Mets have been incorporating shifts. That's Rivera way out there in right field. Carpenter socks oh. one to center. Ruggiano drifting, and he's there. Two out. We mentioned that Gazelman, when he first Got promoted from Binghamton to Las Vegas. Struggled his first three starts in Vegas. He didn't get past the fourth inning. But since then, he's been pitching very well. In fact, he had gone six or more innings in each of his last six starts in Triple A. Brandon Moss. Had the base hit that drove in the first Cardinal run. That was the last batter Nice faced in the opening inning. Ball on a strike. Lucas well, Elman has faced nine batters, thrown eight first pitch strikes, which is really nice to see, particularly looking back at his last start for Vegas. He walked six in six innings, which is not his norm. Well, the last time the Mets promoted a right hander, tall and lanky with some long hair, he uh, he did pretty well. He was supposed to work out of the bullpen too. <laughs> I was talking about Jacob DeGrom two years ago when he came up. Made that first start against the Yankees. After I think it was Dylan G, right? Yeah. Had to be scratched. Uh, scratched. Uh, Montero had the better pedigree. They thought that Montero would be a starter. And that DeGrom would pitch out of the bullpen. He let him know early. Uh uh. Well, Seth Lugo in that start, Ronnie, I don't know if you watched. I did watch. The game was going along real fast, and I'm, all of a sudden it dawned on me. Everybody wants a 97, 98 mile an hour thrower. Here's a guy throwing sinkers, curve balls, pitching to contact, getting ground balls. Beautiful. And out. See, I thought he pitched a fine ball game. His numbers didn't reflect the kind of game that he well, threw. The relievers gave it up when they they came in. So he won one game when he left. Yeah. Three and two to Moss with Molina on deck. And Moss takes outside ball four. Second walk given up by Gazelman. More walks by both of these pitching staffs early in this ball game. Well, two of the four walks have scored on the uh, 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 by the Cardinals, and one by the Mets. The Mets have only had one walk, but the Mets have given up four. The Mets came into the night as a staff with the fewest walks allowed of any staff in the National League, and the Cardinals with the fourth fewest. Here's Molina, who greeted Gazelman. First pitch he threw in the major leagues. Molina hit it up the gap to right center for a double that drove in a run. High fastball out over the plate. And the line drive base hit on another first pitch fastball. Moss pulls in at second. So Molina is two for two. He's only seen two pitches all night. He's been hot. Very rarely do you see him pull. He is basically an opposite field hitter. And he turns on that one. Sometimes so much knowledge is not good knowledge. Let the talent flow. Yadier just seeing it and hitting it off a pitcher he doesn't know. So now the tying runs are aboard for the Cardinals and Johnny Peralta coming up. Peralta grounded out to drive in a run his first time up. Cardinals are a 253 hitting ball club with runners in scoring position and two outs. 281 overall with runners mm. in scoring position. Not quite their record setting performance. What was it 2011 when they hit 330 13, as a team? 2013. 330. 
But the most amazing part about that is that the guy who was their best hitter with runners in scoring position has fallen off the map. That's right. Alan Craig. Whatever Tra happened to him. Traded to Boston and that was it. And at a really young age guy who looked like he was going to be a stud hitter in this league for a long time and just stopped hitting. And when you think about the Cardinals right now and Keith alluded to their injuries the two that really hurt offensively is Aledmus Diaz who was having a, a rookie of the year kind of year at shortstop and of course Matt Holiday one of their clutcher hitters uh, his entire career here in St. Louis. Holiday broke his thumb had to have surgery on it just got the, uh, the cast off. He's hoping to come back before the end of the year. Well. Well, there you go. Lance Lynn is hoping to come back at the end of the year, maybe as a relief pitcher. That's right. Seth Manis just uh, is going to have Tommy John surgery. Waka is really a, a serious thing now. He's got some shoulder issues. In Matt, Matt Adams should be back fairly soon. That will help them. Trevor Rosenthal had been their closer and then lost the job, and then he got hurt. That's line toward the middle, and a great stop by Cabrera. The shovel toss, and he gets the out. Oh, wow, what a play. Cabrera saves a run with a brilliant play going up the middle, takes a hit away from Peralta, and gets the out to boot. This was kind of a knuckleball, it seemed like, jam shot, and just a terrific play to keep it in the infield on the dive. And then to recover and do the reverse flip. Nicely done. That gets Gazelman through trouble. 5 3 Mets after three. You're right, Keith. There was a. Twenty seventeen Audi A four in your tri state Audi dealers. As the arch gleams in the background, Justin Ruggiano leads off in the fourth inning, Mets with a five to three lead. Ruggiano took a call third strike from Jaime Garcia, who has retired his last four, striking out three of the four as he tries to settle in. That's with a two run lead, but it might have been different, but for this play by his dribble Cabrera. Well, the ball kind of knuckled away from him. I think it fooled him. It was a broken bat, as I said. Tremendous dive and then completing the force out. Saves a run. Defense. Oh. Reggiano crashes one to deep left center field. Back goes Grichik, takes a look, and it's out of here. Justin Ruggiano with a long home run. His second of the season. And the Mets extend their lead to six to three. 
Ruggiano with a tape measure drive 15 rows back in the seats in center field. Well both home runs. Fastballs Garcia getting hurt by the fastball. Terry Collins was asked today why Granderson out of the line of Ruggiano because we have Ruggiano here because he crushes lefties. Hit the grand slam against Bumgarner last week and now a long home run against Tommy Garcia. I don't know if I've ever seen a ball go that high here. So the Mets with two home runs tonight. Flores a three run shot in the first. Now Ruggiano a lead off home run in the fourth. There are no grounds one to Jerko. And that's the first out of the inning. Mets now have hit 164 home runs. Nine behind the Cardinals for the National League lead. Ruggiano's been a nice pickup. Remember, he played what two games before he hurt his hamstring and went on the DL. So I was like, "Hello, goodbye." But he now has eight hits and 20 at bats, including the two home runs. Well, no doubter, and Gary, the grand slam he hit in San Francisco was dead central. That was a no doubter. That's a big ballpark in San Brown. Zellman trying to bunt his way on. Usually when a pitcher does that the rest of the bench opposing bench will scream out at him who's going to run for you meet <laughs> Garcia now has given up five home runs in his last eight innings pitched. Well there's action now in the Cardinal bullpen there was none at all in the first two innings when Garcia was getting slammed around. But now Mike Matheny gets a right hander up. And Gazelman takes a curveball for strike three called six strikeout for Garcia. And there are two out of the inning. So one of those strange games for Garcia. He's got six strikeouts which usually signifies dominance but he's been just the opposite. Alex Reyes is the right hander up in the Cardinal bullpen. They've been using him later in games. Interesting choice. You know he's a starting pitcher by trade so. Maybe they're thinking of using him a little longer. He's a hard thrower. Yeah. Another hard thrower. Jose Reyes has been aboard twice and now three times as he lines a base hit to left center. A walk and two singles tonight for Reyes. And a stolen base. Well, he's been the kind of dynamic force at the top of the batting order recently that the Mets were hoping they would get when they brought him back. Well, he's a much more natural hitter right handed, Gary, than left handed. Left handed Jose is a very good hitter, but a little more stiff. He's a natural right hand hitter, and he's been wearing it out from the right side. See if he can steal a base here with two out in Cabrera at the plate. He stole third base at the front end of a double steal in the opening inning, his sixth of the year. Cabrera is two for two, a single and a double. You know what's interesting to me, guys, is that Jose, when he first was signed by the Mets, came with so much fanfare, good and bad. And the injury in some way might have helped him because it got him off the field, it got him away from that. And the second time he's come back to the Mets, really no one spoke anything about him. Back in the lineup playing his best. Carpenter right near the bag, there to make the force play that ends the inning. But the Mets tack on a run. Justin Ruggiano hits one well over 400 feet. His second home run is a Met. And the Mets now with a three run lead for the second time tonight. 6 3 in the middle of the fourth.
Home fourth inning. Robert Gazelman in his big league debut, two and two thirds deep into this long relief outing, faces Jed Jerko. Jerko struck out against Gazelman. That ended the first inning. Mets led three nothing. Cardinals tied it. Mets now lead again by three runs. Lower third of the order for Gazelman, Jerko, Grichik, and Garcia. Action continues in the Cardinals bullpen, so it looks as though. Mike Matheny will consider batting for Garcia. Oh, that was close. Coming your way? I almost got Howie. Howie almost was standing got, up, uh, not paying any attention. Josh didn't even see it. He had his head down. Uh, Josh. He's in his notes. He's got a lot of notes, you know. <laughs> Where'd he get those notes? <laughs> Josh is very well prepared yes, on a is. nightly basis. Big time. Zellman behind in the count three and one and Jerko takes a knee high strike three and two. Let's see if Gazelman decides to go three two slider here. Notorious dead red hitter is Jerko. And a red hot hitter to boot. Oh and he wow. just missed. He didn't miss. Home plate on fire Mike Winters judged it away I guess. Yeah, he just missed the pitch, Mike Winters. Veteran umpire, good umpire. He just missed the pitch. Slider, 3 2, perfectly placed. If anything, low. Nah, if anything. Come on. It hit the corner. <laughs> oh, 10 cup. Third walk given up by Gazelman. And now Randall Gritchick, who grounded to short his first time up. Richick, who was so impressive as a rookie last year, has taken a step back this season. Yeah, he has. He, he, he's having a similar sophomore slump like Mr. Conforto. Very trimmed up beard. Very. He's become something of an all or nothing hitter. Yeah. 15 home runs this year, but hitting just 226, 50 points lower than last year. One on one to Richick. Speaking of Conforto, he's just tearing it up since. Going back to Vegas. Those are his numbers for the season, but since he's been back, he's hitting well over 500. Good. It's good to see. You know, I've heard a lot of uh, people say, why waste it down there? Uh, if he came up here, he'd be in the same situation. He wouldn't be playing. Well, he'd have to play center field. He'd have to play center field, uh, RJ. Yeah, but would he play him against left handers? He's no. playing against everybody there and raking. I he agree. would not play against everyone here. What, with what Justin Ruggiano has done this week, why would you play him against? I, I'm, I, I'm not making the argument yeah. that he should. I'm, well, at some point he will. Yeah. The question is what position he plays next year. It's going to depend a lot on the configuration of the team around him. Colton Wong on deck to bat for Jaime Garcia. Keith, get your first baseman's glove and a fungo out. Might need you in spring. I hear you. I'm a phone call away. <laughs> Just send up the bat signal. <laughs> That was a line, folks, when you were in the minor leagues, that you were only a phone call away from being called out. Yeah. That's an old baseball term. Inside joke, we now brought you into our family with now you have the inside scoop. Gritcha gets tied up and strikes out. Second strikeout for Gazelman. So one out and one on. Now Colton Wong will bat for the pitcher. Comes inside. Ties him up. Well, here's Wong, who's having himself a, a miserable season, but had a huge hit against the Mets in the uh, rubber game of the series in New York off Jerry's Familia as the Cardinals rallied to win. And like the rest of the St. Louis Cardinals team, he has thrived as a pinch hitter, as Colton Wong. Well, the Cardinals have had 14 pinch hit home runs, which is already a franchise record with more than a month to go. Wong is one of those guys that has to over swings, and he's a little guy, he's got some pop, but he wants to hit the bomb all the time, and he's really a table setter. 
I think he would be much more productive if he would just get on base. Remember a guy named Corey Patterson? Yeah, of course I did. Yes. That's what he was like. A guy who should have been a table setter but fancied himself a power hitter and didn't have as good a career as he could have because of it. Broken back rounder foul. Shards wind up all over the right side of the infield. You know, I, I, I hear that all the time, and, and it was used, if you remember right, and this is the broken bat you were talking about. Remember they tried to do that with Carlos Gomez and tried to make him a table setter, a guy who would bunt, hit the ball the other way. He finally said, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to try to do it my own way. And for three or four years, he's one of the best players in the game. Just signed with the uh, Texas Rangers right. after being let go by Houston. I don't know where the Rangers are going to play him. <laughs> Embarrassment of riches, yeah, right? Really. And the curveball sits high to Wong, two and two. So I guess my point is, is that even though you want a player to be a certain way, I don't know if they can do it. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe Corey Patterson could not. He wasn't a good enough hitter to be a table setter. He was a 220, hit the ball out of the ballpark occasionally. I guess the problem is how occasionally is occasionally yeah. Josh Smoker up in the Mets bullpen. Right, if occasionally is 10 to 15 times a year, it's not good enough. If it's 30 times a year, it is good enough. And then the question is, what if it's in between? Well, Wong, if the Cardinals get in the postseason, might have had their biggest hit all year, and that was the game that Cespedes took Wayne right deep, one of the most exciting games of the year, and Wong ended it with a base hit down the left field line. Jerko at first and one out, two and two to Wong. And he lifts one to left. Cespedes samples in. And that's the second out. By the way, Cespedes has looked just fine since the first yes. inning. Haven't seen him flexing or banging that thigh anymore. But he hasn't had to run yet, so let, let's uh, wait till we see him try to go for a ball in the gap or have to run the bases. Well, one thing we know about Cespedes, I mean, seen him play here long enough, is and now he's flexing it again, just as we said. Yeah. That. He's a tough guy, yeah. and he plays with he plays with with some some aches and pains. He tried to play through that quad injury for a month before he finally had to shut it down. There's Tommy Pham, all for one and a walk. He just takes a slider off the plate. I think all three of us were impressed with Tommy Pham over there in City Field. He had a nice series. He had a good center field as well as swinging the bat well. <laughs> Playing left field tonight now with Holiday out. Jerko at first and two out. Pham takes inside two and one. Do you see that scoreboard in right center field with all the scores of around the league? This is that this, is this is all new by the way these new the TVs out there the green score the green that's all yeah. the score that is sensory overload. <laughs> that's a lot of color. And oh. Gazelman comes inside and did he hit him he did. Yeah. Bam yeah. is hit by the pitch. And so now the Cardinals have two men on. Uh, He's got his uniform shirt. Well, not a good guy to hit as you see Danny Worthen coming out because he saw Piscotti's last at bat. Uh, it was pretty impressive. Just missed hitting one out of the ballpark. Got the entire infield grouped around Gazelman. Why do you guys all come in, Keith, when the pitching coach is coming to talk to the pitcher? Is it, is it solidarity? I think we're all just. Curious what the pitching coach is going to say. I always want to know what Mel Mel came out there. Yeah. Mel Stalmar was Mel Stalmar. Yeah. I want you know. I always liked Mel's style when he came out. I always wanted to listen. Um, it's boring out there. <laughs> Mel was very calm. Yeah. And never raised his voice. And I always noticed that when Mel was talking, he's talking to you, but he'd look at everybody. He'd look at me. He'd look at. He'd mainly focus on the pitcher, but then he would say something and look at me and then look at. It was uh, always interesting. Here's Biscotti tying run at the plate in a 6 3 game, and he pounds one foul. Well, Biscotti right up among the league leaders with runners in scoring position this year, second behind Martin Prado coming into the night. I just remember Mel being very paternal when he would come out. He was on your side 100% and positive. This is what you're going to do. And you're going to get out of this inning, and we're going to score you a couple of runs. 
always. And Piscotti swings over the curveball, and it's 0 2. So I guess Elman has shown us both his breaking balls tonight. Mm. Pirates have beaten the Astros 7 to 1. Complete game six hitter for Ivan Nova. What's that? That's uh, the race searage cure. That's what that is. No, I meant the complete game. No. <laughs> 02 coming. Another curve. Oh. That one's fouled off. He's missed a couple. In that Pittsburgh win, Gregory Polanco hit a pair of home runs. So the Pirates started the night a game in front of the Mets. The Marlins, who started the night a game and a half behind St. Louis, are down 1 0 to Kansas City in the bottom of the eighth. Kansas City's hot. Looking for their ninth straight win. Kansas City four games out in the American League wild card race. 0 2 coming. Too high. That's, uh, that was your Dato Ventura who started for the Royals tonight, win six. Well, that was the National League coming in. Now Pittsburgh with the win moves to within three of St. Louis. And the Mets with a win could be three and a half. One two. And Scotty fouls it off. Well, this is the uh, biggest at bat for the young Gazelman's career in his first game. Scotty is their best hitter right now. He's got an advantage over him at a one two count. Scotty's having his signature year with Carpenter on deck. I should say Carpenter's their best hitter. So you don't want to get to him. Two on and two out. Scotty lays off the changeup and it's two and two. So Gazelman about to throw a 75th pitch in long relief. It's worth three and a third so far. Two on, two out, two and two to Piscotti. And he lines one to short, caught by Cabrera, side retired. A bullet, Cabrera snags it and gets Gazelman through the fourth. Cabrera everywhere he's needed to be tonight. Made a brilliant play to end the third and a nice grab there to end the fourth. 6-3 Mets going to the fifth. Folks, with the Mets are ahead six to three. We referenced earlier that Gary had a photo in his wallet with his long hair back in his Columbia days. <laughs> now, folks, take a look. I want to ask this question, and I'm dead serious for you women out there and your men. 
if your daughter brought home this man, <laughs> <laughs> would you let him in the door? That's a text poll. I think he looks fantastic. <laughs> He's ready for the lead of, of Jesus Christ Superstar in the day. Joanna Cespedes lines a base into center field on the first pitch thrown by Alex Reyes. Well, now I've been outed. <laughs> uh, I love that picture. That's, that should uh, be a text ball. <laughs> yes, we all we all have a past that uh, that seems like it was another lifetime. Base hit, fastball in. See the difference is though, Gary. Our past is laid out there. Every single day, you see some silly picture of Keith and I. This is our first chance to get an older picture well, of you. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that you were able to share that with the world. <laughs> and folks, Gary carries that around like a baseball card in his wallet. I just try to remind myself <laughs> of the life that that once existed. You know, that's what 36 years ago that that picture was taken during my senior year in college. Did you use enough conditioner, like he said? <laughs> you know, I was not a Big conditioner guy, but every once in a while I'd mix it in. I had good long hair. It was oh, it was, no, it was, it was very classic. nice, very nice long. And Beautiful. On the back of that photo, folks, it has all Gary's, uh, <laughs> you know, his, his degrees, stats, all, all the statistics, <laughs> <laughs> height, weight. <laughs> oh gosh. One on one to Flores, and that misses inside. Oh, I'm just thinking if you could have thrown like 95 Gary with the coming back oh. with Syndergaard and DeGrom and all those guys. You'd yeah I don't them. know if that would have flown in 1980. <laughs> That's right. I can just hear the old man. Mary if you bring that guy back here one more time you're grounded. Well here's the thing the reason why that picture was taken. Yeah. Was because I was just about to graduate from college and I had to I knew I was going to have to cut it. Oh, because you're going to gonna, get a job. You're going to go in the world. Exactly. Wow. So oh. that, that was the last, you know, the last photos before the, um, yeah, the change. Yeah. Yeah. Before the sellout. In, 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 <laughs> into the real world. Yeah. <laughs> Flores lifts one down the line, and Biscotti coming into foul territory won't get to mm. it. Well, that was pretty cool. The picture, um, I mean, just it was just awesome. Awesome seeing you with a little growth. You know, I tried uh, with my time off growing a little beard. Uh, gray is the color that comes in now, so it, it, it's no no more fun. Yeah, I, I had a few days off yeah. last week and didn't shave for a few days. It's all white. <laughs> it's a little scary. I got the just for men guy. Yeah, yeah we haven't offered it for free. <laughs> <laughs> Now, if you could set us up with that endorsement, yes, uh, that's a different story. Yeah, it's all different. Story. Speaking of endorsement contracts, you're about the Oakland A's clubhouse. Yes, I have. <laughs> Cespedes at first and nobody out, not going, and Flores goes after a pitch out of the strike zone, and Alex Reyes has a strikeout. You know, we haven't even talked about Alex Reyes. Alex is uh, one of those guys who is a bigger stronger version of their best pitcher Carlos Martinez this year he can throw 100 miles an hour he's going to be a number one or number two starter for them someday but like the Cardinals will do they'll bring up young hit, uh, right handers or young pitchers and put them in the bullpen and he's a Jersey kid he grew up in Elizabeth and then very shrewdly Jay Bruce swings and misses at a breaking ball. Very shrewdly, the um, the Reyes family that moved Alex down to the Dominican to live with his grandmother. So rather than being subject to the draft, oh, he's an international he free was agent. an international free agent, and the Cardinals signed him for a big bonus. Jay Bruce grounds one toward the hole, run down by Carpenter, Ooh. gets the out at second, and that's all. Nice play. Those are the little things right there, folks. It's a ball hit well in the hole. You get the lead runner. Keep that runner out of scoring position. It should be done. This is the big leagues. But it's done nicely by Carpenter here. Very nice. Says, but it's not running uh, hard at all between first and second base. In fact, had the slide about 10 feet short of the bag. 
want to keep him healthy. Looks like he's limping a little yeah, bit, doesn't I, it, Gary? I just don't know how much that play in the first inning has cost him in terms of confidence in that leg now. Here's T.J. Rivera pops one straight up. Molina sheds the mask right at the screen, but runs out of room. Well, you don't want him. He already had to hesitate because the ball, the dodge, yeah. the ball. And you know what? I just don't understand why they wouldn't put some, keep some ice on that during the game. Well, the last time we saw him hitting his leg and limping like that, it was when he tried to play that ball off the wall, and he wasn't the same for a month. It was when he originally hurt it. Yep. So now two out. Bruce at first, and Rivera at the plate. So to come back and lined out the short over two. By the way, this Reyes kid throws pretty good. He's got a nice hook and he throws hard. Just shy of his 22nd birthday, number one prospect for the Cardinals. He's yet to give up a run in the major leagues. For his first four outings, seven scoreless innings, nine strikeouts. Slowly, Carpenter deals it awkwardly but throws out Rivera to end the inning. Lead off hit, one left. Halfway through. And some of us just can't live down our past. 6 3 New York. Lynn, take a. The Mets quest for a wild card spot as they get ready for game two against the Cardinals plus all the latest on the Dock and Strawberry situation on Loudmouth presented by Cheapo Air tomorrow at 530 only on SNY. Let's answer our Verizon trivia question. We asked who were the three Mets players who hit home runs in the National League Championship Series in 2000 against the Cardinals. Lots of Peyton and Zeal. I had them. I, Did that's you unbelievable. That's I'm great. so excited for myself. I finally got a Mets trivia question correct. We need to get you back in to beat the booth. <laughs> Changes for the Mets. They double switch. Kelly Johnson will come in to play second base and bat ninth. And Josh Smoker will come in to make his third appearance in the big leagues. Nice but, job of relief by Gazelman. Nice three and a third. I, I've liked what I've seen from Smoker so far. Straight over the top, got a little bit of gas. Uh, breaking ball, he can throw for strikes. So, um, the man who came up for one afternoon 
is now back for his third appearance. Well, remember, it was the doubleheader against That's the right. Cardinals, right? He's the extra player. He showed up for the last three innings of the second game and then went back. Matt Carpenter leads off against him in the home fifth. Smoker's last outing was good in San Francisco in uh, Saturday night's game. He faced two batters and retired them both. Well, he's got a great name. He's got to make it. <laughs> Well, a very productive major league debut for Robert Gazelman through 75 pitches in long relief over three and two thirds, no runs, two hits, three walks, one strikeout, uh, two strikeouts, and a uh, hit batsman. And he's in line to be the winning pitcher in this game. Smoker, 27 years old, former first round pick of the Nationals. Had a long and winding road to get here. Carpenter lifts one to left. Cespedes right there waiting for it. One out. Let's check in with Steve Gelb. Steve? Gary, Josh Smoker had a rough first half of the season with Las Vegas, almost a five and a half ERA. But in the second half, in 14 appearances for Vegas, just two earned runs, and it got him the call up. To the big league. Smoker says the difference has been that he was able to comfortably throw a cutter, especially to left handers early in the count, gave them something to think about to back off of that fastball. But it's something he's been working towards since spring training, finally perfected it right after the break. Now facing Brandon Moss, who's been on base twice with a single and a walk. He drove in a run in the first inning and it was after his hit that John Neese left the game. And that one hits him in the shoulder, and Moss is on base, second Cardinal to get hit in the last two innings. You know what's interesting, Gary? When the Mets first went to Las Vegas, they had all of those good young arms. My first thought, as you can see, brushes the back of Moss, was, boy, what an awful place uh, to try to nurture young pitching. But in retrospect, really, if you're a young pitcher, it makes you be very careful. Because uh, if you're not careful, you're going to blow up and have a high ERA and a bad, uh, bad one loss record. I guess my question is: Is careful what you want, or do you want them to be able to just let it loose and, and not worry about the altitude and the conditions there? I think it makes you throw strikes, uh, so you don't walk people. And they brought it to the major leagues. Yadier Molina, first pitch swinging again, served him well his first two at bats. Yadier, another one of those players now. That are wearing the light spikes, or you know, my color blindness is an issue, but it looks like white spikes. Yep. A lot of players are wearing those now. It's like everybody's the Oakland A's. In the air to right center, angling in is Bruce, and that's the second out of the inning. We referenced it earlier. We were talking about endorsement deals. The uh, Oakland A's. Danny Valencia and Billy Butler getting into a fist fight apparently over Butler costing Valencia an endorsement deal. Well the, the rep was in the uh, in the locker room which happens all the time the representative for the company and he was just saying to Danny Valencia hey listen you know we pay you a lot of money to wear our equipment we've seen you a couple times now not have our equipment on during the games. And Valencia kind of said to him, well, well, listen, I only wear it during batting practice. During the games, I always have them on. When Butler ch chimed in, well, that's not really true, Danny. <laughs> Sometimes you wear it in the game. And they got heated, and it sounds like Valencia smoked Butler, who's now, um, I don't know if he's on the concussion DL or something like that. Yeah, he's missed a couple of days yeah. with, uh, with a head injury, so. Don't mess with a guy's earning potential, ever. <laughs> now it, it said in the story that I read that the players get paid like ten or twenty thousand dollars. Depends a year. on the player. Depends on the player. Like if you're just a regular run-of-the-mill player, you're going to get a an amount that every other player gets. Scrabini. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, Scrabini. Right. If you're if you're you I love that. If you're you went Cespedes, <laughs> you're not going to get Scrabini uh, uh, money. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, no. So the better the player, the bigger the oh, endorsement. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, that certainly makes sense. Three and zero to Johnny Peralta with a runner on and two out, and he takes a strike from Smoker at 95. The problem for some guys is that they'll they'll get something from their agent. They'll say, hey, they're going to pay you X amount more than the other company. 
and you go okay yeah we'll take it and then you try the shoes on you're like or, or the glove or whatever this is awful I can't wear these yeah, you would think if you you're going to get endorsed with money you'd like to use a product that you actually enjoy using <laughs> well it happens to golfers all the time they win a great tournament they change clubs to another club and they can't win a tournament for a couple of years. 3-2 Moss will run and Peralta rips one into left field for a base hit. Moss will stop at second base as Cespedes is able to get to it quickly. So now the Cardinals have two on and two out. Well, Cardinals swing the bat too. And this has kind of been an offensive night. A lot of line drives. So that'll get Jed Jerko to the plate as the tying run in a six to three game. Well, Jed Jerko faced Robert Gazelman twice. Gazelman threw him two sliders to start off the at bat. Very smart by Gazelman because Jerko has 20 home runs this year. Eight of them have come on a first pitch fastball. So you have to be very careful on the first pitch, especially if you choose fastball against Jerko. Moss at second, Peralta at first. Neither one runs particularly well. Cardinals fourth hit of the night. Jerko has struck out and walked. And he takes a breaking ball for a strike. It's a final in Miami. The Royals win their ninth in a row, beat the Marlins 1-0. Giordano Ventura six scoreless innings for the win. Another team the Mets can pick up. And hopes both the Mets and the Cardinals. That's right. So the Pirates have won, the Marlins have lost in the National League wild card race. At smoke to center field. Ruggiano steadies and makes the grab. Side retired. Two more left on for the Cardinals. Mets still lead at 6 3. All right, Doug. Justin Ruggiano leads off against Alex Reyes in the sixth inning. Ruggiano hit a 447 foot bomb to center field his last time up. So he has hit two home runs in the last week for the Mets, and they have both been enormously well struck. Reyes misses inside with a curveball, and it's two and one. Ruggiano, Darno, and then Kelly Johnson for the Mets in the sixth. Reyes' is second inning in relief. After Jaime Garcia went four, allowed six runs, seven hits, walked one, struck out six, gave up two home runs. 
It'll be a terrible feeling as a starting pitcher when you give the other team a lead, your team gets it right back for you, and then you can't yeah. keep it there. And that was Garcia's fate tonight as Ruggiano strikes out on a 99 mile an hour fastball. Second strikeout for Alex Reyes. Road ahead brought to you by GMC. Two more games in this series. Don't forget Thursday's an hour earlier, 7 o'clock Eastern. Then the Mets go home for a very important homestand. Three with the Phillies, four with the Marlins, and three with the Nationals. After this road trip is over, the Mets only have two more road trips left. They got that. Two and two. Cincinnati, Atlanta, Washington trip. Is that is that that trip? Yes. And then it's and then the uh, last trip to Philly and Miami. Reverse. Miami, Philly. I end up the season in Philly. I, all I know is I end up in Cincinnati at some point. Is, a, is that one of the trips? Well, the yes. next trip next starts one. in Cincinnati, and oh. remember now it starts after a Sunday night game in New York against the Nets. Eight o'clock in New York, followed by one o'clock the next afternoon in Cincinnati, uh -huh. which is disgraceful. It's wow. disgraceful. There's no. Oh, that goes over the head of Darno, a curveball from Reyes. I mean, Major League Baseball should never allow that to happen. My prediction: zero zero after five. <laughs> Mets want to get 38 games left, right? So the Mets have to play 10 over to get to 90 wins like they had last year. Darno goes down swinging at a changeup. Well, Reyes has got good stuff. Back to back strikeouts for Reyes, two out. He's, in, uh, he's a little bit intimidating, to tell you the truth. A big overhand hook and a 99 mile an hour fastball. So two out and nobody on that Kelly Johnson up for the first time came in on a double switch in the last half inning. Mm. And he nubs one down to third. Peralta throws him outside retired. So Reyes is retired six in a row. Middle of the sixth Mets up by three. People's United Bank brings you tonight's pitchers for the Mets. John Neese left in the first inning with knee pain. Robert Gazelman made his major league debut and was very impressive. Josh Smoker has given the Mets a scoreless inning of relief and he'll stay out there for the bottom of the sixth. So the Mets have uh, already thrown through three pitchers, 111 pitches through five innings. Ouch. Randall Grichik leads off. 
Alex Reyes is out on deck so the Cardinals are going to stay with Reyes at least that's the way it appears there's nobody up in the bullpen. Interesting move down by three runs in the sixth inning. And Grichuk takes it high for ball one. Now I don't know whether that's because Mike Matheny feels he's short in the bullpen or short mm. on the bench. Smack to deep left field. Back goes Cespedes. Takes a look and it's out of here. Randall Grichuk takes Josh Smoker deep. His 16th home run of the year cuts the Mets lead to 6-4. Keith, have we seen some bombs tonight or what? They're flying and that ball's down and middle end. Now Alex Reyes takes Ooh. a big cut and fouls it back. Reyes has had one big league at bat, three for 17 in his minor league career. Here's the home run. Watch the hip rotation. Yeah, pound for pound, Grichik is an awfully strong kid. It's the Cardinals' 174th home run of the year, the most in the National League. Smoker has Reyes flailing. And it's one and two. You know, we were talking in between innings, guys. This would be quite a game for the Mets to take. <laughs> to have a starting pitcher go one third of an inning, give up three runs, and win a ball game. Good high fastball by Smoker. Strikes out Reyes for the first down. Well, it's a lot more work to do That's against an explosive Cardinals team. Yeah, you know, we were talking about Grichik earlier, how he's become an all or nothing hitter. How about this? He has 69 hits this year, more extra base hits than singles. 37 extra base hits, 32 singles. Here's Tommy Pham, who's been on base twice, a walk and a hit by pitch. And the breaking ball in for a strike from Smoker. Cardinals leading the National League in home runs. They're on pace for their second biggest home run total ever. And all the National League teams being blown away by the Baltimore Orioles. Mm. Mm. Led by Mark Trumbull's 38 home runs. 38. His last seven hits have been home runs. He was not exactly a highly desired player, Trumbull. Jim Anderson, Jerry Blevins, both up in the Mets bullpen as Smoker sends that to the backstop. Another free agent is Trumbo, and always amazing how on their option year, is it still called an option year? No. Walk on their walk year. On their fly year. <laughs> <laughs> when you hit 38, yeah, I guess it, it is a fly year. Depends what kind of contract <laughs> you get at the end of it. Think about it. No one really wanted Trumbo, kind of signed late. No one wanted David Freeze, who signed in the middle of spring training, just got himself a two-year contract. Yep. One, two coming. And that sails to the backstop. So that's two in the course of this at bat. That's a double barker. Didn't get it quite up on the screen though. <laughs> Fam crouched, very crouched in his stance, and look at his back elbow. I believe it is horizontal with the ground, almost a slight angle up. And he goes down swinging for the second out. Back to back strikeouts for Josh Smoker. Well, interesting that Smoker this inning is mixing in this little some change ups. Got him out in front there. So two out and nobody on. And now Stephen Biscotti, who's a hard 0 for 3 tonight. 
Line to left. That was a shoestring catch by Cespedes. Last time up line to short, a leaping grab by Cabrera. Slider low and in for ball one. That's bullpen thus far. Middle relief. Sterling. Oh. High in the air to left. Cespedes back to the warning track. Back at the wall. Leaping and he made the catch. Cespedes tracking that towering shot all the way going up against the wall. And able to reel it in. And Josh Smoker appreciative as Biscotti just missed one. He's a player. He's got plenty of time to get under this. Got a beat on it. And the leap. He was, robbed him. Was it going to be out? That's, it was going to be close. He robbed him right on the top of the head of Rogers Hornsby. Seventh inning, Mets with a two run lead. Jose Reyes has been on base three straight times tonight with a walk and two singles. And he slaps one down to a third of foul ball. Nothing and two. Reyes batting left handed for the first time tonight. Walked, stole a base, scored a run in the first. Single to left, drove in a run, scored a run in the second. Single to left in the fourth. And the games I saw does not look very comfortable from the left side. And strikes out on three pitches as Reyes gets him with a changeup for his fourth strikeout in two and a third innings of relief. This kid looks like the real deal. Yes, he is. Well, look, that's that's what Matheny took a chance by hitting him there. Is that he is saying that Reyes is going to hold the Mets no more runs, and that'll give them an opportunity to try to come back. Now it's Dribble Cabrera, who's two for three tonight, a single and a double. He scored a run. He's driven in a run. And he bats left handed for the first time tonight. More power lefty, but a higher average righty. And he takes a fastball for a strike. Reyes allowed a base hit on the first pitch he threw to Yuena Cespedes. Since then, he's retired seven in a row with four strikeouts. Mm. Cabrera cracks one deep to the gap in right center field. Piscotti back. He won't get to it. It's another extra base hit for Cabrera. Third hit of the night for Cabrera, his second double. Well, he came out of the shoot, swinging the bat great, coming off the DL, and continues. One thing you see in the Cardinals here, I don't know if you guys noticed it also, not a lot of speed in that outfield. They don't even get close to any of those balls that have some 
air underneath them. So now the Mets have a runner in scoring position with one out. And you had a Cespedes the batter. Cespedes single to center on the first pitch. Reyes threw in the fifth inning. That's a three for five with runners in scoring position tonight. Balk. A balk called against Reyes. Moves Cabrera over to third. He was getting the signs from Molina and it, it was taking a while and he just flinched. Giving him the signs oh. and see he wanted to go with that first pitch. Sometimes you assume as a young pitcher that the catcher is going to put down a sign. When he puts down a different sign, it shakes you up. You're like, whoa, whoa. That, no, I don't want that pitch. And that's what happened to him. Well, that's the downside of having a 21 year old in his fifth major league game on the mound. It's the first balk by a Cardinal pitcher this season, by the way. So now the Cardinals have to bring the infield in with Cespedes at the plate. A dangerous proposition. And now they're going to walk him intentionally. Smart. Probably the better move because it brings up Flores, who's a double play candidate. Reyes is throwing about 94 on this intentional walk, by the way. So, yeah, I might be inclined to pinch hit Loney here. That's a good call. Yeah. You want that glove out there you with want the, the glove anyway. out for defense? Defense, the only issue you have is that, well, Wilmer is too. I was going to say a double play candidate, but. I like the loney call, Keith. Yeah, let's see. I think you're, you're going to see exactly that. Wilmer's going back to the dugout. They got a left-hander up in the bullpen, the Cardinals, to counter. The only right-hander on the bench is Rivera. So it's going to be Loney, and we'll see if uh, Mike Matheny makes the move to the left-hander. Here's your Verizon Mets box score. Flores with a three run homer in the first inning. Ruggiano a home run in the fourth. Three hits for Cabrera, including a couple of doubles. Two hits for Reyes. So Loney is announced into the game, and no move as yet by Matheny. I'm thinking that because he hit Reyes, you know, you think that he was going to go with him, but he's decided not to, and he's going to go to his bullpen. He's got to go to the left hander. Yeah. So he. Took the time that he needed and made the decision to go to the left hander. And Zach Duke will come into the game. We'll be right back to St. Louis. Duke now with his seventh different major league team. Well, he's pitched a lot this year. 64th game. Got him on at the end of July. 
from the Chicago White Sox. He was very heralded as a left handed starter when he first came up with Pittsburgh and got off to an unbelievable start lost his way and has found his way in the bullpen. This will be his 11th appearance for the Cardinals. He comes in to face James Loney with first and third and one out. Loney pinch hitting for Flores is three for 14 in his career against Duke Cabrera at third Cespedes at first with one out. And the sidearm fastball outside for ball one. St. Louis Cardinals bullpen third best in major leagues. In ERA at 2.92 since the All Star break. Big run out there to drive in. Sacrifice fly gets it done. Base hit keeps the rally going. Look away. Loney slaps one toward the left side. Jerko with a sliding stop gets the off balance throw on target and they turn the double play. Side retires. It didn't look pretty for Jerko, but he makes the play. And the Cardinals get the 6 4 3 double play to get themselves out of trouble. St. Louis Cathedral in the shadow of the Gateway Arch. Former Jet Chad Cascadden joins the conversation on a new Jets blog podcast. Here his thoughts on the new defense and the new options it gives Todd Bowles. Only on the JetsBlog.com, part of the SNY.TV blog network. CC, huh? Chad Cascadden. James Loney stays in at first base. Jerry <laughs> Blevins will pitch the bottom of the seven. We were talking about uh, how well Seth Lugo pitched and he deserved a better line. Well, Blevins is the one that came in that game, gave up a couple of hits that ruined that line. Blevins was not available for at least one of the games over the weekend because he's just been overworked and had a little tightness in his shoulder, but not considered to be serious at all. And right back out there tonight. Based in the heart of the Cardinals batting order, Matt Carpenter is. 0 for 2 in a walk tonight. And that's pulled into right field, and Carpenter has a leadoff hit. Takes the hard turn. Bruce throws behind him, and Carpenter gets back safely. So just like that the Cardinals will get the tying run to the plate against Blevins in the seventh. Didn't get the curve away enough. Nice try by Bruce. So now it's Brandon Moss who's been on base three straight times single walk hit by pitch. 
will probably be Blevins last batter with right hand hitters to follow. Oh geez. And it's on the inside corner at the knees. Here's the turn by Carpenter and he whoops I better put the brakes on and get back. You know, you're saying to yourself why would he say to take such an aggressive turn on Bruce who has such a great arm. Well all the reason you do that if Bruce boots it just a little bit and the ball glances off his glove then he can go to second base. That's why he was so aggressive. Carpenter so well schooled. Very short lead for Carpenter. And Moss takes a big cut of the fastball and it's 0 and 2. Well I was thinking Carpenter and Loney are both well schooled as teammates. We were coached by Matt Carpenter's father in high school. Yeah, right. Missouri City, Texas. They played together. Reminiscing, I'm sure, if they stand at first. Jim Henderson up in the bullpen for the Mets. He'll no doubt be on to face Molina, who's on deck. 0-2 coming to Moss, and curveball struck mm. him out. So Blevins, after giving up the base hit to Carpenter, takes care of Moss on three pitches. That'll be the end of his tenure in the game, and Jim Henderson will come in to face the righties. Well, this is the curveball he wanted to throw to Carpenter. Moss way out in front. So Terry Collins will take the ball and hand it to Jim Henderson for his first appearance as coming back from a long stint on the disabled list, trying to protect a 6 4 lead in the seventh. We'll be right back to St. Louis. Second game of this series tomorrow night. Match of aces, Jacob DeGrom and Carlos Martinez. Our coverage begins at 7 o'clock tomorrow night right here on SNY. Well, after nearly two months, actually more than two months on yeah. the disabled list, Jim Henderson returns to action. From a couple of different uh, arm injuries, uh, Henderson, when the Mets were at their best in April and they had that great run, Henderson was a big part of that, averaging over 10 strikeouts every nine innings. Coming to face Yadier Molina, who's attacked the first pitch in all three at bats, tying run at the plate in a 6 4 game. And a first pitch breaking ball toward the middle, uh, under the glove of, Reve of a Johnson and into center field. And the Cardinals have the tying runs on base. Looked like a ball Kelly Johnson might get to, but it just snuck underneath him, and Molina's got his third hit of the night. First ball, fastball hitting again, just out of the reach of Kelly Johnson. Mets for this three days are trying to mix and match at that position. You know, 
Walker away after the birth of his daughter this morning probably will miss the entire series There's an outside chance he might be here for Thursday's game but that's trying to do without one of the most important players for this very important series. So Henderson gives up a first pitch base hit to Molina Molina with three hits tonight all on the first pitch. Mm -hmm. and now Johnny Peralta with the tying runs on base Peralta is one for three tonight. Carpenter at second Molina at first and the slider outside for ball one Terry trying to get this to the eighth inning to Reed, which has been his back end of his bullpen Reed, and then to Familia. So this is the crucial inning. He's been trying not to stretch Reed into the seventh and Reed has been. Uh, a victim of a lot of overwork as well. This might be a night where he has no choice. You know, I don't like to say this, but every game is like the seventh game of the World Series, isn't it, right now? Especially playing this team right now. One to know to Peralta with Jerko on deck. That's down to first base. Loney's got it to second for one. Cabrera back to first. Henderson covers, but not in time. They get the three six force on Molina for the second out, but Peralta beats the rabbit first. Tough to get two here. Ball not hit hard at all. So make sure the one. Peralta just beats it by a step. You know the throw kind of took Cabrera off to the opposite side of the bag, so he didn't get a lot on that throw. So now Carpenter at third, Peralta the tying run at first, and Jed Jerko will be the batter. Jerk goes 0 for 2 in a walk tonight, but he hit the ball very hard last time up, lining out to Ruggiano in center field. First pitch, fastball hitter. Each and every time he comes to the plate, never changes. So Henderson starts him with a slider for a strike. You got to be careful with Jerko. 18 of his 20 home runs against right-handers. First game back from the DL. First outing since June 18th for Henderson, and right into the pressure cooker. Knocked down by a Darno, and it's one and one. Always the issue when you're pitching late in games like this, Gary, is that you know that Jerko loves the fastball. But Jim Henderson's strength is his fastball. So you can't get beat with your second pitch just because the hitter at the plate loves that pitch. Just make it a little better on the corner. One and one to Jerko. And he goes after the slider and misses, and it's one and two. So he stayed with three straight sliders. What's the play now? Um, uh, you can stay with the pitch because he's proven he can't hit it. Or if you decide to change it up because you want to change the speed, fastball head high. Nothing he can touch. Jerko 0 for 3 in his career against Henderson. First and third and two down, 1 2 coming. Go back to the slider and just missed with it. Two and two. Well, it could have called that pitch. It was a backup slider. But it looked like it stayed on that inside corner. Carpenter at third, Peralta at first with two down. Two two coming to Jerko. Fastball just off the corner and a full count. First fastball he's thrown in the turn it back. Now Peralta will be in motion. Yes, he will. Carrying that tying run to first base. They're going to play behind Peralta, uh, guarding the line 
Reyes at third base not really but playing very deep. Neither is Loney. Peralta gets set to take off in first. 3 2. And Jerko takes strike three call. Henderson paints the outside corner and gets the Mets through the seventh. Clutch return to action for Jim Henderson as he paints the outside corner with the fastball and gets the strikeout he needs. By Chevy or Donna Ventura, six scoreless innings. KC beats Miami for their ninth straight win. Gregory Polanco, two home runs. Yvonne Noble went the distance in the Pirates' victory over the Astros, snapping Pittsburgh's four game losing streak. Kevin Gaussman, six scoreless as the Orioles beat the Nationals, eight to one. Jay Bruce leading off in the eighth inning. Pops went up in foul ground. Playable for Peralta, I think. And wow. just enough room to snatch it at the rail. Okay, working its way toward the dugout, but Peralta stayed with it. One pitch and one out for Zach Duke in the eighth. Boy, it's just been so tough for Bruce. Doesn't get a break here. Peralta makes the catch, and now is an 0 for 11. Little slump. Well, I guess the slump since he put on the orange and blue. 12 hits and 75 at bats in a Mets uniform. So one out and nobody on. Now Curtis Granderson will be the pinch hitter. Mets have only one right handed bat on the bench and that's the backup catcher Rene Rivera so it's Granderson who gets the call here. And he takes outside from Duke for ball one. Curtis had the big double in front of Cespedes home run in the seventh inning on Sunday night broke up the no hit bid by Jeff Samarja. Boy Duke has really invented himself reinvented himself hasn't he, he just became. A side armor who just tries to own lefties. And Curtis takes a slider for a strike. And it's two and one. By the way, we showed Baltimore beating Washington. The Red Sox in Toronto also won. Clay Buckholtz won for the Red Sox. Ari Dickey won for the Blue Jays. So those two teams stay tied for first with Baltimore two games back in the AL East. That race and the National League West race are the ones to watch, right? Dodgers were up 2 0 on the Giants in the second inning. Rob Segadin hit another home run. Here are the ALE standings after tonight's results. All three top teams winning. Uh, I still like Toronto, Gary. I'm not changing gears. Rounded down to first. And Moss will take it himself. Two out. Ronnie, what do you think? Well, I, I loved Toronto when they had 
maybe the, the best pitcher in baseball Sanchez uh, and then they sent him down so I, I don't know what to make of that except Jay Happ um, now has 17 wins so I'm a Toronto guy also I just think Baltimore's starting pitching has not been good enough now Gossman was great tonight Bundy has been good since he got back in and if they have a lead at the end of the game Zach Britton has been unbelievable. Do you believe he's the top of the Cy Young for the uh, American League? I think League? he's got to be because I, I agree. there's nobody else who's really asserted himself. And what does he have now? 43 straight appearances without allowing an earned run. I agree. He is he's the first pitcher since Mariano Rivera who can get outs with one pitch. Sinker. Just one pitch. Addison Reed getting ready for the bottom of the eighth. Justin Ruggiano homeward back in the fourth inning. And he takes outside from Duke one and two. Baseball's a funny game, huh? Justin Ruggiano laboring in the minor leagues, never probably going to get another shot in the majors, and a manager that he had years and years ago in the Dodger uniform wanted him. To play for his team. That's how he got here. Well, the Mets needed a right hand batting center fielder with Juan Ligaris out with the thumb surgery, much the way James Loney got here, right? Because Loney was a product of the Dodger farm system. Terry Collins knew him and he was languishing in the minors. You, you always need a, a little angel on your shoulder in this game. You really do. It, it certainly helps. Yeah. Three two coming. And Ruggiano takes outside ball four, so Duke got ahead 0 and 2 and lost him to a walk. Let's check in with the studio. Doug Williams has another game break brought to you by the New York State Smokers Quit Line. Nine straight for Kansas City. So they stay four back in the wild card in the American League. Here's Travis Darno, and he Ooh. slashes one foul off the netting. Hit that right out of the glove of Molina. That's how you get a catcher's interference call. Is that well, how Jacoby Ellsbury does? Ten of them this year ten. so far for Ellsbury. It's a major league record that nobody had ever thought about <laughs> until Ellsbury started racking them up. Well, I don't think the Yanks paid him 184 million for the 10 uh, catchers interference, but whatever. Do they count that in your on-base percentage? <laughs> no, I'm serious. Does, does catchers interference count toward your on-base percentage? Well, that's interesting because it comes off oh, as, a, as an E2, right? But it's, it's a but, no at bat. No at bat. E2, right? So I would say so no. I don't know. Got to find that out. Well, the other question I would ask that. Keith might be able to answer better is is it a skill to get on by a catcher's interference field mice do that stuff <laughs> <laughs> yes but is it a skill is it something you can try to do it's a skill for field mice it's good I guess. for a 215 hitter not the, not the two twenties don't even do that the 215 <laughs> 210 hitters tell us Barry you said that Zach Duke came in to get a key double play to end the seventh inning. Retired the first two here in the eighth before walking Ruggiano. And Darno hits a comebacker. And that retires the side. Addison Reed will be in for the bottom of the eighth. Mets protecting a two run lead in St. Louis.
simple hot dog, onions, sauerkraut. New York Mets baseball on SNY is brought to you by Verizon. Current Verizon Wireless or Fios customers go to SNY.tv slash Verizon all season long for access to unique Tuesday night baseball experiences. I saw you indulging. I, I did. They brought Keith and I one. I think though that we lead the league in hot dog shots over a advertisement. I think we do. I think we do. And not a hot dog yet either. <laughs> exactly. Well Addison, Addison Reed. Yeah Addison Reed is a. Uh, it's been going through a little bit of struggle. His velocity has been down a little bit. He's been using his slider more. A lot of that is from overuse is a strong term, but he's been used a lot. How about that? Gave up a two run double to Eduardo Nunez in his last out against San Francisco on Saturday. He was able to steady the ship and finish the game. Randall Gritchick, who homered his last time up, holds up on the swing, and it's one and one. I just discovered. Uh, from top side that catcher's interference does not count towards your on base percentage. Thank you very much. Well I had a 50 50 chance I took it. Richick pops one up behind second base. And Cabrera takes charge of it one away. Now where exactly did you go for that information. Um, I'll, I. Mitch our statistician. Yeah. Yeah. He, he knows. Everything. I had to go back and relieve myself and come back and he told me on the way back in. Oh, thank, thank you. I appreciate I'm that. I'm glad, it was, I'm glad it was on your way back in. Well, <laughs> uh, Mitch, by the way, is outstanding. Top of the line. Top of the line. And here's the thing. I mean, Dave Freed, our, our home statistician, Ooh. fantastic. But Mitch has unbelievably good handwriting. Yes, he does. Yes. Which is the opposite of Mr. Freed. And he's, and he's very green, too. He doesn't overuse. He uses small pieces of paper. He's not ruining the environment. Jeremy Hazel Baker has four pinch hit home runs this year. <laughs> He's part of that Cardinal contingent off the bench that's had a great season pinch hitting, and he drills one into right field for a base hit. So Hazel Baker with a one out single. And that'll get the tying run to the plate for the Cardinals in the bottom of the eighth. Fastball out over the plate. Beautiful swing. This young man reminds me of Clint Robinson last year for the Washington Nationals a guy that has been in the minor leagues forever. He gets a shot because of some injuries in spring training and he's made himself uh, he's had himself a great year. So now Tommy Pham who's 0 for 2 a walk and a hit by pitch. Pham had a base hit against Reed in the series in New York. And Reed throws a fastball for a strike. A little better velocity on that. 93 for Madison. Mets six runs and nine hits. The Cardinals four runs and eight hits. The Mets got a three nothing lead on a Wilmer Flores three run homer. John Neese had to leave because of injury in the bottom of the first. Cardinals tied it. Mets took the lead in the second, and they've been in front ever since. And he comes inside on Fam and gets ahead 0 and 2. Nice went just a third of an inning. Robert Gazelman in his major league debut stands to be the winning pitcher. Three and two thirds scoreless innings. Josh Smoker worked two innings, gave up a home run to Gritchick. Levins and Henderson combined to throw a scoreless seventh. And now Pham strikes out on three pitches against Addison Reed. Three fastballs, and he's gone. Two out. Good spot. Best fastball read time in a week and a half. Had a little cut on it too, cutting away from that right-handed hitter. There's Piscotti, who's a very hard 0 for 4 tonight. Yeah. Two line drive outs, and the last time up, he hit one at the top of the fence in left field that Cespedes timed his leap on and grabbed right before it might have gone out of the ballpark. Got to keep it in the ballpark. Yeah, Piscotti takes a big rip, nothing and one. Piscotti has 18 home runs this year. He was in the minor leagues longer than they thought because they were hoping his power would come. It never did come in the minor leagues, but it's all right. It's come in the major leagues. First round draft pick in 2012 out of Stanford. Made his debut last year, hit 305 as a rookie. Reed misses low, a ball and a strike. Kevin Segrist, the left hander. And Sun Wong Oh, the right hander up in the bullpen. Yeah. 
That's a letter high strike. Mm. But Scotty didn't think so. One and two. Since the All Star break, to me, just from watching a lots of games, the high strike has been called more and yes, more. Yes, no question. Right? No question, Ron. It's a good pitch to hit. Hazel Baker at first with two out. One and two to Piscotti. Popped up foul that'll come out of play. Well, Piscotti has sent it Cespedes' way twice and gotten nothing for it. Well, this is his first at bat in the first inning. A sinking line drive, and this is a rob of a home run. And Cespedes just making some fine plays in the field. That was in the sixth. He also had a line drive right at uh, Cabrera at short. One two and again fouled off. He's had some good swings. Best swings the Cardinals have had all night. That's the crazy thing about hitting huh Keith. You can be right on pitches having a great game. Great swings and you got an over working. Yes. There's eight guys out there with mitts. There's that spherical ball and that cylindrical bat. It's awful tough. It's so geometric of you. Thank you. you. Must have been great in ninth grade. Tracking a fast moving object at a very high speed and within a split second. Seventh pitch of the bat to Piscotti and he just got a piece mm. of the slider to stay alive. That's a nice uh, fight off of a pitch there. That was a pitcher's pitch. Stays in the at bat. Hazel Baker at first with two out. Two two coming. And Piscotti rolls one toward the mm. hole, a base hit. Hazel Baker pulls in at second and the Cardinals of the tying runs aboard for Matt Carpenter. And that is a very impressive at bat right there. Tried to throw a little off speed slider to him and get him out in front. Stayed back. Cardinals have left nine men on base in this game. Four times five, four times they've left two men on base. This is a potential fifth. And now it's Carpenter who's one for three and a walk tonight. Seems to always come to this doesn't it. For Addison Reed this entire year. Goes through the most difficult part of the lineup. And he ends up with the Cardinals best hitter. In a key situation. Carpenter hitting 312 this year with runners in scoring position. Kelly Johnson playing back in right field at second base, deep in the shallow right field. That shortstop hole wide open for Carpenter. Yeah, yeah, and also the uh, distance between Cabrera and Johnson is wide open. And if you're Kelly Johnson, you've got to be a little careful because Carpenter can run a little bit. If he doesn't hit that ball on the nose, you've got to come and get it. If the ball down that left field line, that's two runs. Yeah. Carpenter yanks one foul. That's bowling on his hands, and it's 0 and 2. Well, last three seasons. 331 batting average for Carpenter with runners in scoring position. Fifth best in baseball, and this at 254, you got to consider this an off year for him. Who are the other four? <laughs> Read ahead of him, 0 and 2. Carpenter's only had two career at bats against Reed and struck out both times. Reed trying to get him again in a big spot in the bottom of the eighth. Hazel Baker at second, Piscotti at first. And good. Carpenter lays off the slider at his feet, one and two. Really good at bats here. One by Piscotti, and now 
Carpenter taking that slider. A tough outs making Reed work. This is a very good offensive team. Not only did they lead the National League in home runs, they're third in the league in runs scored, playing in what is not a great hitter's ballpark. One two quick pitch in the air to center field playable for Ruggiano and the side retired Addison Reed gets out of trouble in the eighth and now the Cardinals have stranded 11 runners tonight. We go to the ninth six four New York. Kelly Johnson leads off the ninth against Sam Tui Valala. Johnson's second at bat after coming in a double switch. That's led this game since the second inning. Jeremy Hazelbaker stays in in left field, so the new pitcher Tui Valala hits in the number one spot in the batting order. And Johnson smacks one foul. Nothing in two. Well, Tui Valala is another one of those great arms. Only six games. He just was recalled about a week ago. 17 saves in Triple A, 66 punch outs, and 40 something innings. So he's an emerging star. Johnson fouls off the curveball, and it's still 0 2. Jerry's Familia up in the Mets bullpen, getting ready for a chance for save number 42. He bears down on the record that he shares with Armando Benitez, 43 saves in a season, Mets club wow. record that he set last year or tied last year. Fastball up and away to Johnson, one and two. Jose Reyes on deck, then as Drupal Cabrera as the Mets look for insurance in the ninth. This will be an enormous win for the Mets, particularly the way it unfolded early. That's hit up the middle, but right mm. in the bag is Jerko. And he throws out Johnson one away. Sunday on Mets Insider, Nimmo, Conforto, Reynolds, Kelly, and Rivera get an inside look at the players who have become frequent flyers on the Vegas shuttle on Mets Insider, presented by WB Mason Sunday at 4.30 only on SNY. If only there were a Vegas shuttle. I mean, there's one if you're coming from LA, but not to New York. Here's Reyes has been on base three times tonight. Walk in two singles. He scored two runs, driven in one, stolen a base.
This is Reyes's 26th game as a Metropolitan, and he scored 17 runs. That's what you're looking for. Mm. He certainly has provided a dynamism at the top of the order that the Mets just did not have. Yeah, that really puts it into perspective, Chief. It does. Like Travis Darno has 20 runs scored all season long. He's been here a long time, even with the injuries. Reyes flares one into shallow left center. Hazel Baker coming on, diving, but he can't make the catch. Reyes stumbles around first and stops there. Third hit of the night for Jose Reyes in front of the on rushing Hazel Baker. Well, if it's a time to steal, he's already got a stolen base. Might be a good idea to try to pilfer one here late with a two run lead. Good effort by Hazel Baker. Just a little inexperience out there, playing very deep against the left hand hitting Reyes. Reyes was watching the play, so never saw first base. It's been the same place for a long time, Jose. <laughs> <laughs> so Reyes aboard with one out. Cabrera's had a big night a single, two doubles, an RBI, a run scored, and two terrific plays in the field. To Ivalala, worried about Reyes, and rightfully so. This is a spot where Reyes absolutely should be stealing the base. Jose has six stolen bases, but he's only stolen second base twice. The other four have been steals of third, including one tonight. Well, he's got a big lead. Tui Valala does not have a good move. He's kind of slow to the plate. There's only one caveat to all of that. That's Mr. Molina behind the plate. Well, when Reyes stole third in the first inning, Molina did not make a good throw. If he had, Reyes might have been thrown out. Change up in for a strike. Six hits in that top of the order, Gear. First and second hitters in the, in the lineup. Table setters. It's a good recipe for success. Ball and a strike to Cabrera. You went assessment is waiting on deck. Six for eight to be exact with a walk. So three runs are scored already. Reyes is another potential. It's been very productive in the one two spot in this order in this ball with this Wigo. Slider by two of Alala, one and two. Well. No move by Reyes to steal a base. Do you think the presence of Cespedes on deck changes the equation there? I, I was just thinking that. Um, boy, I, I, I would rather be on second base with a steal with Cabrera and Cespedes both have a chance to drive you in with a base hit. Of course, if Cabrera didn't, then they'd probably walk Cespedes. That gets mm. away from Molina, and that'll get Reyes to second base. So he moves up on the wild pitch, and the Mets have a runner in scoring position with one out. Move point now. And now he could steal third. Well, uh, Molina called for a fastball there, guys, and uh, Valala bounced it before the plate, so no chance from Molina. Third baseman Peralta. 30 feet off the bag. Third base for the taking for Reyes. Two and two to Cabrera. And he fouls off the fastball. Cabrera, six hits and 15 at bats in the four games since he returned from the disabled list, so he has hit the ground running. Reyes dancing off the bag at second as Tui Valala stands on the rubber. Trying to get the young pitcher something to think about. Slider misses inside. It's three and two to Cabrera. Well, a walk to Cabrera would be huge because that would force them to pitch to Cespedes. Mm -hmm. They walked Cespedes intentionally with first base open as last time up. You remember you have James Loney now behind Cespedes. Pinch hit for Flores in the seventh inning and stayed in. Three and two with one out. 
And Cabrera takes strike three call. Got him looking at a slider. And I that's th the second out. I thought that hit the knees, Ronnie. Well, th this kid is starting to mature. All fastballs before, and he had the ability to come back with the 3 2 slider. Got the call from Winters. Borderline knees. He got the call. Well, you got Loney on deck, a left hand hitter. So it appears that the Cardinals at least are going to make a show of pitching to Cespedes. I, I would not pitch to him uh, at all. I wouldn't even have a show of it. I wouldn't have a, a before dinner aperitif. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> well, the slider well off the plate as Molina set up off the plate. Well, last time up, Flores was on deck with the right hander Reyes pitching. The Mets batted Loney for Flores after the intentional walk, and they brought in the lefty Duke, who got the double play from Loney. That's a fastball strike. This time they're not bringing in a left hander. You know the thing about Cespedes is that we, we never really talk about his uh, intelligence quotient as a hitter. He's the kind of guy that might just sit on a breaking ball here, and if he gets it, we know what kind of breaking ball hitter he is. Two and one. Cespedes one for three tonight. These are the kind of decisions if they don't work out. Managers get skewered over. Yes. Huh? Keeps them up at night too. Yes, it does. Self skewering. <laughs> Lena again sets up off the plate and yeah. Tui Valala puts it on the corner with a slider and it's two and two. Well, what makes Valala, Valala tough is the fact that he can make nasty pitches and then <laughs> make bad pitches and, and then, then bounce one before the play and then you got him in a, you got him in a situation to kill him and he'll make a nasty pitch. Now the pitch to throw here is fastball in with something on it. But does he have the guts to do that. Yes. Stays away. Sesman has stopped the swing and it's three and two. So in this instance when the Mets had Jim Henderson out there. He counted to Jerko with the 3 2 fastball. Let's see what Valala does. Tui Valala does. Reyes at second with two down. Loney on deck. 3 2 coming. Stayed with a slider. He tops one toward third and he'll beat this out for an infield hit. So Cespedes got on top of that slider and rolled it about 60 feet and winds up with his second hit of the night. Let's see how he ran to first. I thought he I was watching the whole way. He ran well. He smelled it. <laughs> no trouble with the quad there. You hitters never seem to have any problem with your legs when you're running out of base head. You always pick it up. Well, that was deceptive. I could never <laughs> run. <laughs> I was okay. I was not I was never fast at first. So now runners at the corners with two out for Loney, who had it. An opportunity in the seventh inning, but grounds it into an inning ending double play. Chance at redemption here for Loney. Reyes at third, Cespedes at first. Molina's telling Tui Valala that the first baseman, Brandon Moss, will be playing behind Cespedes. Interesting choice. That is interesting, <laughs> isn't it? That would be an important run if Cespedes takes it to second. Loney hits one just oh. foul with a late cut, almost kept it fair over the bag. And just missed. He almost took out Reyes. I guess what the Cardinals are doing with Moss behind Cespedes is they're saying that it's more important for Moss to have the ability to cover a little more room. Well, but if he takes second yeah. and then Loney gets a base hit, now you're talking about a four run lead. Yep. You got to play a little closer, you got to hug him a little bit, and then push back. Cespedes just flexed that right leg a couple of times. But he's coming back too quick. And Loney quickly down on the count 0 and 2. Loney's been in a little bit of a slump lately. He had a tough series in Arizona, San Fran, 
a little bit of a struggle. You know, Keith, with the count 0 and 2, this wouldn't be an awful time for Cespedes to go. And if they are silly enough to throw the ball, you have the greatest speed on third base. Loney drives one toward left center, cutting across Grichik. He won't get it. Base hit. Reyes comes in to score, and the Mets get the insurance run on a two-out, two-strike hit by James Loney. It's seven to four, New York. How many of those have we seen from Loney this year? Using left center field. Was that 0 2? Yep. 0 2, behanging slider. A pitch to waste. Nice hitting. So the Mets, for the third time tonight, have built a three run lead. Now Jay Bruce with two out and two on. 0 for 4 tonight. Just um, my observation just from one game here is the Cardinals have no speed none in the outfield not really on the infield either. Quickly Owen two to Bruce. Jonathan Broxton in the bullpen if needed. Meanwhile Jerry is familiar long since has gotten himself ready in the Mets bullpen. Tui Valala has thrown 27 pitches in this inning, and now Hansel Robles is getting up in case the Mets add to this lead. Bruce throws strikes out to end the inning. Mets tack on a run on the Loney two out hit. Big game. Mets up 7 4 going to the bottom of the ninth. Last of the ninth inning in St. Louis. Changes for the Mets. Alejandro De Aza comes in to play center field. He'll bat ninth. Justin Ruggiano moves over to right field. And Jay Reese Familia comes in to try and earn his 42nd save of the year. Well, his last appearance, you see his numbers, of course, off the charts. Uh, his last appearance came in on Sunday when Noah Syndergaard, uh, after eight superlative innings, said that that was enough. And Familia came in and closed the door. Brandon Moss first man to face him Moss is one for two a walk and a hit by pitch tonight. Familiar the seventh Met pitcher of the night John Nee started lasted just a third of an inning before knee pain took him out of the game. Robert Gazelman made his major league debut did a terrific job for three and two thirds in long relief and he stands to be the winner. If Familiar can make it stand up. Moss lifts one to left and Cespedes jogs in. One out. 
Coming up tonight, Geico Sports Night after the postgame show. We'll have all the baseball and football news. Geico Sports Night right after the postgame right here on SNY. A win tonight for the Mets would move them within three and a half of the Cardinals for the second wild card spot. I was just thinking if Jerry Reese can hold hold this. What's the protocol? Most closers love to keep the ball when they get a save. But would you want to give that ball to Robert Gazelman for his first win? I would. I, I yes. That, think that would be the way to go. Didn't we have a similar situation last couple of weeks ago with Gabriel Inoa? Got a win in his major league yes, debut. Yes, you're right. In relief. Yes. Yep, yep. You're right, Gary. And I, I'm pretty sure did Familia save that one as well, or was that a walk-off win? Well, Gary, let me go back into my uh, database here and the find it. The time. <laughs> Like Sherman and Peabody. The time machine. <laughs> <laughs> Molina's three for four tonight. Molina had one of the big hits against Familia in the save that he blew in New York. The other one came from Colton Wong as Familia let a lead get away against the Cardinals in the final game of that series. What's your uh, database, uh, Abacus? Or? I, no, I didn't bring it. I believe it's a stick in the sand. <laughs> High now he's behind Molina three and one with Johnny Peralta on deck. That bullpen has gone eight innings now and given up one run. Cardinals have had plenty of opportunities. They've left 11 runners on base. Three and one to Molina with one out, and there's a strike three and two. This game is a microcosm. Of what the Mets going to have to do down the stretch when Lugo or the niece or whoever takes niece place starts you might have to win those seven four games. And Molina strikes out for the second out. So Familia is taking care of the first two here in the bottom of the ninth. Blew him, blew him away upstairs. So the Cardinals are down to their final out. Johnny Peralta coming up. Peralta one for four. He's driven in a run tonight. Jacob DeGrom tomorrow night against Carlos Martinez. As we move to the top of the pitching food chain. This is inside ball one. DeGrom will be looking to bounce back from. Argu arguably the worst start of his career. His last time out against the Giants. Mm. Out of Peralta. The Mets are trying to win a third straight game. The Mets haven't won three straight since July 4th. Tonight, the Mets and the Giants are the only teams that have not had a three game winning streak since the All Star break. Peralta fouls it away, two and one. By the way, the Giants started that big series against the Dodgers tonight in LA. Three to two, Los Angeles. That game's in the fourth inning. I did not think that Bumgarner had his good fastball in San yeah. Francisco no. at all here. He's been hit, hit tonight, apparently. Peralta grounds it to short. This should do it. Cabrera makes the play, and the ball game is over. Jerry's familiar with a one-two-three ninth inning to seal it. The Mets bullpen throws eight and two-thirds tonight. Gets up just one run. Robert Gazelman gets the win in his major league debut. And the Mets take a crucial first game of the series in St. Louis to pull within three and a half of the wild card race. This is one of those games where it can really be a building block for a ball club that each and every day has to win a game. Their starter goes a third of an inning. They use six other relievers to get through a game and win and keep the offense was was on point. Well, the top of the order, Ray, as we mentioned in the open, was coming rounding himself into shape. Three for four, three runs scored, an RBI.